to be here to swear. Of course, we get strays at the end. <clears throat> All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Village of Royal Palm Beach Special Magistrate Hearing for Wednesday, June 19th, 2019. As I like to say, if you've got a code enforcement issue, you are in the right place. First thing we're going to do is swear everyone in. We'll probably do it once or twice more as strays come in. So everyone, please raise your right hand. Say I do and we're done. Does everyone swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Amen. Good. Everyone had their right hand up. You'd be surprised. Um, most of the cases I will hear tonight are going to be either violation hearings or fine assessment hearings. Hopefully everyone has signed in so they know to pull your file and call you. Uh, we'll figure that out when the last person's sitting here and going, why didn't you call me? Um, these cases will proceed as follows. The village will call your name. You will go up to that podium over there and identify yourself. The village will show documents and put certain things on the record. Then you get to respond, and then I get to make a decision. That hall flips over when we do the fine mitigation hearings at the end of the agenda. Those folks have been through a violation hearing and a fine assessment hearing, and now they're the ones asking for relief, and they get to go first. I think I've said my normal speech. If we're ready, please take it away, Village, and more strays are walking in. Thank you. Amity Barnard, Assistant Village Attorney. We're starting on page one of the agenda, status slash fine assessments he hearing, excuse me, 18-2031, 9100 to 9250 Belvedere Road, Royal Palm Business Plaza Condominium. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, order finding violation and affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. And exhibit three, pictures. <clears throat> All right, you have an affidavit of service, you can you have service and you can proceed. All right. Yeah, it's, it's Bruce Elkind. <clears throat> and your relation to the property? Uh, I am on the board for the HOA, which was just voted in a few months ago. Thank you, sir. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the previous order finding violation. Page two of that order. Exhibit two is Sunbiz information. Exhibit three is photographs. Find them so you can see them. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Thank you. Sir. All right, admitted without objection. All right, this is a status slash fine assessment hearing. So what are we here for? The status part or, or the fine part? Uh, we can hear from the respondent. Okay, so you've shown me a series of pictures of trashy bags and debris and things around this building. Is that correct? Correct. And landscape. And the landscape. Okay. How do you spell your last name? E-L-K-I-N-D. Good guess on my part. Okay, great. Just, we like to keep the record straight. Uh, tell me about what's happening with the Royal Palm Business Plaza condominium. Should I review what I said at the last hearing, or does it bear repeating? I was here last time, but you can well, go do a short were. version of it. Okay. Well, the abbreviated version. We are a plaza of four buildings with 84 units. Up until three and a half years ago, we found out then that one of the unit owners that owned 60 of the 84 units, or so 71%, was the board was in total control. We had no clue that he was embezzling money. He was involved with three other, uh, I guess, lawsuits, and he is involved right now and out of the country with an EB-5 scam. The uh, Asian investors were scammed out of $50 million, so the government was now stepping in. He's somewhere, I think, in Australia, but he embezzled out of our board and not paid his dues over the last three and a half years to the tune of over $800,000. So we are basically at the mercy of the court here because we do not at 14 owners one of which in addition to that person or actually two are not paying their dues 
So we collect roughly $15,000 a quarter to pay for pretty much utilities to keep everything running. There are 10 units that are being rented in those 60 units of that owner that the bank's trying to foreclose, but they're collecting their rent, putting it in escrow. So we are not getting any of that money to help keep the plaza running. The bank did contract with Potter's Lawn and Landscaping, and they assured me they were taking care of items one, two, three, four, five, and six on the violations. We contracted with Wellington Manage, uh, Maintenance and they are coming out tomorrow for the garbage situation. And then tomorrow we're also scheduling pressure washing of the sidewalks and the buildings. Uh, section number nine of the violations, we keep bringing up with the bank's attorney, Andrew Pinheiro, to issue letters to their tenants because they don't listen to us that they cannot be parking those trailers and whatever is in the back, in the back. And they also violate the garbage issue because they throw everything they can think of in front of the dumpster, in the dumpster, around the place. So we're fighting a losing battle here. All right. And I was assured that there was a receiver appointed to the Asian investors for their equity in interest, but he says it could drag on at least another six months or year minimum, <coughs> the battle in court. Okay. And what is the village's position so, regarding their response and their position? The village will be willing to continue this to next month. Um, a little concerned about the last statement that the respondent made, but based on his other testimony, we can continue it to the 710 hearing. If we could establish also in this order a compliance date of 78. Well, All right, we know that's not going to work, but it's going to at least put a date in there for correct. something. And we'll maintain the $100 a day fine that was uh, okay. your previous order. They've bumped you another month. I'm sure you don't mind that. Hopefully you will be able to give us another report in the month, and it's much better to get a status than a fine. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Okay, I appreciate so that. We'll get an order out to you in a few days after the hearing. Hmm. Got it? Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Moving now to the fine assessment hearings on page two, second from the bottom, case 19 0079 243 Preserve Court, Lori A. and Ricardo Lani. Dina Foley, code officer for the Village of Royal Palm. We would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Yeah. All right, do you have a signed green card? Do you have service? Hello. Your name for the Lori Lanny. Thank you. Mm -hmm. These are the exhibits that the village wants to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the prior order finding violation. Page two of that order as well as the signed green card. Exhibit two is up here. It's proof of ownership from the property appraiser website. Just showing who owns the property. Sure. Mm -hmm. And exhibit three is photographs of the violation. Do you have any objection to these documents? What is this? That's not mine. That is. Right. That's the objection. <laughs> well, can you, can you come over here for a second, court officer, and <clears throat> point out the violation in this photo? That's not even my house. I think you're in the back there. Oh. It is. This was taken from over here off of Crestwood, and then when I went down, it cleared up. Oh, oh, I yeah, see. It's between. <clears throat> I know exactly where that is. Okay. 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 Sorry about That's that. That's okay. Any other objections? <laughs> no. Thank you. All right. Documents are admitted without objection. Okay. <clears throat> so, Costco gazebo or something like that? It looks kind of <laughs> like one. <laughs> so, no permits, nothing like that. She actually turned in her permit today, right? So. I'm okay. just going to ask for more time. That works for me. When do we need to continue give? this to eight, the eight one? Excuse me, compliance by eight one or the eight fourteen fine assessment hearing or twenty five dollar a day fine. All right. Thank you for applying for your permit. The village Michael. has accepted that you have done so, and they are bumping this to August to see if you got it all issued. So keep keep on it, and hopefully it'll all work out. Okay. So I don't have to do anything from here. You'll kind of take, okay. You're going to show back up on the fourteenth if you don't have a permit and you're not. Told oh. by them not to. Okay. okay. Thank you. Happy Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Two down. Pile Moving now to the top of page four, repeat violation hearings, case nine. 
Hundreds there, bottom page. I'm sorry, bottom of page three, we're still in fine assessment. 19-0023-100, Sparrow Drive, number 11, Krista Dyson. Margaret Hancock, Code Enforcement Inspector for the Village of Royal Palm Beach. I'd like to know the following documents and evidence. Exhibit one, previous order finding violation, affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. And exhibit four, AS400 permit information. All right, you have an affidavit of service. So you have service and can proceed once you finish whispering. Hi, yes, I'm Krista Dyson, the owner of the property. Thank you. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the order for the violation. Right. This is the order. Right. Exhibit two is proof of ownership from the oh. property appraiser website. Mm -hmm. Exhibit three is photographs of the violations. I do have a question about Exhibit Three. Once you finish showing sure. me, yep, we'll get to the merits as soon as mm -hmm. we move the documents. And then Exhibit Four is the village's ISO 400 permit information. Okay. Do you have any objection to the documents? No, no objection. Thank you. Okay. And you can speak to the magistrate about your question or code officer. And just briefly, I know we had spoken on the phone. Um, regarding, you had said, I guess you left me a message saying replace the siding was a question. So all of the parts that are pictures of the wood that's beneath the window, um, is that's the siding and there's rotted wood on the front and back of my unit. Um, any part that's essentially covered in that wood, there's, there's some rot and then all the framing is rotted. So the issue with respect to the staining um, once they replace that, it will be painted. I have contracted with the contractor that applied for those permits to tear out the rotted wood, replace it with something that'll last, paint all of the unit, including the stains on the, on the stuccoed side of the building, and he will do the tear down of the overhead um, trellis that's very rotted. So um, uh, the sidewalk has been done. Correct. Um, yeah, so that was taken care of, but that was the HOA's responsibility. Um, my permitting, I gave them a, well, you can see they applied for it, but I gave right. them a check in mid-April. They then finally got the NOC and permit step to me in mid-May. And then there was a lot of back and forth craziness with their expediter um, up to after, you know, the recheck date early June, she hadn't gotten, gotten all the correct paperwork. And I think there might still be an outstanding issue regarding engineering for the permit to be issued. Um, so we're trying to get that taken care of um, because that's a requirement for the village. And so, do you plan on removing the trellis or yes, are you that'll rebuilding be gone. it? No, 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 gone. Because none of the other units have a trellis. And there was some, as you can see, if you've been on the property, all 21 units initially had a trellis. And a few years ago, the HOA, which is majority controlled by just a few owners, really one owner and his family, um, they went through and removed every trellis except for mine um, because I, you know, I'm one of, I am currently the only resident owner left on that property. Everything's been bought by the same individual is my understanding. So, um, so they never did the work on mine. And, you know, I was told they would pay for that, but at this moment in time, I've, I've paid for everything. So I'm still kind of fighting with them, but that's not an issue for you today. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> no, I mean, if you're fighting with your, your association over this, it does give you a little bit more excuse level. So what is the village response to her position? Unfortunately, we're at the fine assessment stage here. Uh, understood. Um, she probably should have showed up here at the violation here. I, I was here. She was here. She, she was, did, so. and, and the village gave her considerable time. Um, she, the prior order is dated March 15th, and we, we gave until June 7th for compliance. So it's right. a matter of many months. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we need to start a fine running. Well, we'll see. Okay, so she does have a permit application in. Yeah, it is in. It's in plan check. It's in plan check, and it was filed on the 11th. It was filed on the 11th, but you also testified that you hired these people in April. I have a you canceled have... check dated 424 that they held for a month to 520. The NOC and the paperwork that you all needed was sent to me on 524. Come, I come, signed come. it. Had it come notarized. Here. Come here. Let me go look just for a second. We just. Many email correspondences, but this is my check. Okay. So you can see 
you know, in good faith, I tried to get them to get started on this. I don't know why there was a If you go back to the microphone, if you could, and I'll bring the documents back to you just so we get you on the record. Thank yeah. you. Okay. That, that does not include all of my email correspondence, but I mean, it, it's, I can certainly, you know, provide that or show you screenshots of that if you'd like. Those are really, that's, that's my contract. And you can see the contract stated in March. So the discussions have been going on for a long time. I actually have, in the area where they're replacing the siding, I was not cited for a violation, but I have a window that will not open. It's original construction. And two windows that have been broken due to the lawn service and kids in the neighborhood. There's actually holes in the windows that have been patched. So that's why the windows are being replaced because they're taking all that wood off and so we thought we would drop the windows in at the same time just because they it's a necessity at this point with hurricane season i was afraid last year they'd blow out so okay um we have a check number 777 on an account where i'm not going to put the account number or anything into evidence just Thank note you. that there was a check written on 4 24 of 2019. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. um, and I can't do this work myself. I mean, I, I just to point out, it's beyond the scope of my abilities or knowledge. <laughs> well, and anyone who has wooden structures in Florida is pretty much in bad shape. I watched the neighbor across the street do a multi-year replacement of every bit of wood he had with hardy board because it was moisture proof. And he used to have to replace wood all the time. Um, given the fact that you have shown me a check dated within a month of the last order and it was not your fault that the people have uh, pushed you off i'm going to bounce it another month oh, that'd be good. and, and Thank you. give you a little more time what time are we doing on the other guys from the front seven eight seven ten just to make sure that they keep moving on it yeah and i've been very clear with them that time is of the essence since uh march <laughs> or 25 dollar day fine or 25 dollar day of fine I mean, she's done what she can do. You can't beat these people into helping you, but, you know. And they are moving. Let, we are, we are going to do it forever, so. Or late, right. wait forever, so. Okay. At least we have you the back that upon them. Thank you very much. All right, thank uh, you. If you ever bring up paperwork work like that again, feel free to white out or. Oh, I didn't think Account numbers that. and stuff. Yeah, because I just. If I actually took this into evidence, people would be able to go write checks on your account. Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't do that. There's no money left in there. I just paid for this. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's number three. Thank you. You'll get an order in the mail. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Now we're back to the top of page four, repeat violation hearings, case 19-0766, 221 Bilbao Street, Allen, Stromfeld, and Laura Vitanza. Gail McLean, Code Enforcement for the Village Royal Palm Beach. I'd like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, and affidavit of service. Exhibit two, previous order finding violation. Exhibit three, verification of ownership. Exhibit four, picture. And exhibit five, affidavit of compliance. This code sections are 14-4A, repeat violation for disabled vehicle. I observed this violation on 5-6-19, mailed it certified and posted on the property. Okay. You have an affidavit service, you can proceed. Can you say your name for the record, sir? Pedro Patterson. What What's is your it? last name? Patterson. Patterson? Yes. What is your relation to the property? I'm a tenant. Do you have anything in writing authorizing Picture? you to speak on their behalf tonight? No. I'll take him anyway. So. And what was the name again? The Victor? Pedro Patterson. Pedro, Pedro Patterson, okay. Thank you. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the notice. What can I do? Repeat violation, and it's a notice. Exhibit two is the previous order finding violation. Page two of the order. Exhibit three is an affidavit of compliance. Exhibit four is proof of ownership. And finally, pictures of the violations. Do you have any objection to these documents? What's the violation, though? Uh, the unregistered vehicle. Where, where? Shown in the picture. This, I got. I, we'll we'll get, get there. Okay. Any objection? Just to the documents. Well, you can speak to the magistrate about the merits. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Okay. Your objection to this is that this is not unregistered. Is that? It, it is not unregistered. Okay. 
All right, it's admitted over objection. We're not going to worry about the picture. It's an expired tag. Okay, watch that. It has an expired tag on it. No, it's not unregistered. Well, it's, no, it I got I got the stickers. I got the stickers for it. At and, the time and, when I took the picture, it had an expired tag on it. That's not it. That's the, that's not the tag for it. Okay. Um, we have a picture of a dually. Now you have something you want to show me. Please bring it forward. Let me see what it is. She wants to show me the registration and the... Okay. Da, 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 da. 94 VIN, color white. Is that thing even white? Cups of masonry. All right, I have a Florida vehicle registration that you're telling me. Is that for the truck? I mean, it says net weight 4,797 pounds on this thing. Oh, no, I'll probably, take the, I'll probably take the wrong one by mistake. Well, see, you know, I have a Ford F-150. My F-150 weighs more than that. That's a dual. No, I said I'll probably take the wrong tax. That's a 3,500. I, I I'm, a, I'm a business owner of a construction business, and I got me a lot of trucks. I got me a lot of vans. Well, this ain't the right Yeah, truck. I'll probably just take the wrong one up. Like well, do you have the right one or you know? I ain't got it on me right now, but I, yeah, I got I could produce the right one. Anytime oh. you bring a vehicle to your house, it has to have a tag, a current tag on it and displayed. All right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with your truck yeah. being a dually. I mean, my kids ride horses. They would have loved that when they were showing because yeah, they could but have towed a house. On but, the no. but why is there not a tag on there now that's current in the picture? Right. Special Magistrate, the photograph shows the expired tag. The testimony of the code officer is that that sticker was expired. Whether he has paperwork well, that I, had the sticker on it doesn't mean that the sticker was well, placed now, on first, the license well, the, plate. The problem you're dealing with right now is physics. That registration is not for that truck. That truck weighs two to three times what that registration's for. So he has no registration right now for that vehicle. So you can't prove to me that that vehicle was registered. Now, here's the practical point. If it was registered, why the heck didn't you just have the sticker and the license plate on that vehicle showing it was all legal? So you fixed it, but you didn't fix it for days. Is that correct? Because you do have it was that. Out for one, one day. day. So it was out for a day. So we're just going to have a one-day fine. A $50. For a $50. And you're going to make sure that the next time you have you know, the properly stickered, correct license plate on that truck, so you have no problem parking it there. So one day, fifty dollars granted. Not continuing, yes, sir. So yeah, I mean, with the proof you've given me, I can't tell the truck is registered. So I have to go with them. No, I just gave you the wrong one. That's my bad. That's my uh, it's mistake. No problem. So it's just you know. just a fifty dollar fine. That's all. It doesn't continue. You got it registered. That's it's all going to be just that fifty bucks. You can either pay it or you just let your landlord yell at you for it. I don't care. It's up to you. Okay. Granted, $50. Thank you. Thank you. Staying on the same page down to the violation right, Patterson, you're done. You're all set. Oh, you're okay, done. that's good? All yes, right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Right. Moving to violation hearings, case 19-0390-380, La Mancha Avenue, Fabian G. Johnson. The code section is 6190A, TARP on the roof. I observed this violation on 318-19, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and posted them on the property. Like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Notice of Hearing, and Affidavit of Service, Exhibit 2, Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 3, Picture. Okay, Lou. Yeah. Lou lost. Okay, you have an Affidavit of Service, you have service, and you can proceed. Why didn't they make the tarps blue? Make them a nice brown. Can you say your name for the record? Fabian Johnson. Thank you, sir. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the notice of violation and notice of hearing. 
There's a notice of hearing. Notice of violation. Exhibit two is proof of ownership from the property appraiser website. And exhibit three is a photograph of the violation. Do you have any objections to these documents? No, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Okay, admitted without objection. Hi, right, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Sorry for your roof. Is it going to be fixed anytime soon? Are you getting a permit? Are you getting a contractor? What's the story? I've actually gotten a letter from the uh, insurance company like two days ago. And uh, my public address sent over an estimate for them to get everything taken care of, but then they're asking for a revision. And that's the only thing that I have from them. Okay, so this is covered by insurance somehow? Well, that's what we're working on. Okay. Is it, it, it happened a few months ago, and then we've been dealing with the insurance company since. Okay. Um, usually they don't like blue roofs in the village unless there's some sort of roofing permit attached to it. You may want to apply for one that would keep you out of trouble. But what time are you asking for anyway? Compliance by 8-1 or the 8-14 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. All right. They want you to comply by August 1st. We, we have a... Linda up here. Why is Linda up here? Are you disputing with your insurance company right now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, insurance companies never pay anything. Come on. So. Okay, we'll bump that out to the compliance by 9-7, excuse me, 10-7, October 7th, or the October 9th fine hearing. Or $25? Yes, sir. All right, 10-7, 10-9. Um, Having been through this before, the village staff, they're giving you an extra two months to get this together. You may want to think about pulling a roofing permit. You can get one and that'll keep you out of trouble and that will probably let you keep the tarp on the roof for a while. Okay. You may want to consider that, but talk to your attorney and your adjusters about that because, roof, because I can tell you insurance companies are never fast about fixing these things. No, I know. All right, so 10, 7, 10, 9, 25 dollars granted. So hopefully you'll get something going. If you're permitted before then, you should be out of trouble. Yes. I just come to the building over there and that's it. Yeah, at least get the packet and look at it. You may be able to get a permit, which will keep you out of trouble for six months and extend it for another six months, which may give you enough time to yell at the insurance company and get through the hurricane season? This claim is probably more than that. Yeah. Have a higher contractor to do the work? Or Correct. Yes, ma'am. His contractor is still All right. His contractor support. Well, anyway, they've given you till 10 7, so hopefully you'll get things together by then. Keep in contact with the code enforcement officer. You know, it's nice if you tell them this is going great or I need a little bit more time so they aren't going, why didn't you ask me months ago? No, he has called me, yes. That's good. Just keep in contact. They just like knowing status. They like knowing that you're trying because there's some things you can't help, like, you know, someone writing you a check. Yes, sir. All right. Take care. Stay Thank dry. You. Next case. Top of page five, case 19 0549 155 Ponce de Leon Street, Osama H. Quash me. Excuse me if I. <laughs> the code sections are 6190A95. 1557 and 144 a drive and sidewalk are stained screening closure is missing screens hedges exceed eight feet uh, high grass and weeds and vegetation growing in boat and boat was not being moved I observed this violation on 416 19 mailed a notice of violation notice of hearing certified and posted them on the property I'd like to enter into evidence exhibit one notice of violation notice of hearing and affidavit of service Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Okay, you have a service via posting. You can proceed. Your name for the record, sir? Amin Kasmia. I'm representing my brother, Osama Kasmia. Okay, can you spell your first and last name? I mean A M I N, Casmia C A S M I A. Thank you. And this you. is authorization for you to speak today? Is that correct? And that's the one. Yeah. <clears throat> After the top, it's, I mean, Casmia. Okay. Can we keep a copy of this? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. sure. Yes, maybe. 
These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit mm -hmm. one is the affidavit of service for the notice Castle. of violation and the notice of hearing. What? This is the notice of hearing. Notice of violation. Exhibit two is proof of ownership from property appraiser website. And exhibit three is photographs of the violations. Do you have any objection to these documents? At all. Thank no. You, Thank you. All right. Admitted without objection. How do you spell your last name? Kasmia, sir. Kasmia. C A S M I A. I mean, Kasmia. Kasmia. C A S? S M I A. Okay. All right. And you are Osama's brother? Yes, I am, sir. Okay. You Unfortunately. Yeah, well, he likes to be called Sam when he shows up yeah. here, so. Um, so what does Osama say about this? Uh, he agrees on everything, but we, we did some, some jobs on the uh, yeah, well, complaints, but we need some time sir, to work on the others. Well, so here, here, here's pending. the deal, because he was here last time with the boat. The boat, uh, Now, the was... boat, no, stop, I'm, I'm not done yet. He was here last time with the boat, and he said, when the boat was disabled, I think it had flat tires or something, and the boat hadn't moved in years. He said he was going to take it to you or some other brother. It was going to be sold, and he just moved it. He actually didn't even move it. He just put air in the tire. And then if you look at those pictures, he had it over on the one side, and that picture's on my birthday. And then a month later, it's over another spot, and it's growing a bush in it. And I drive by it every day, and I would just chuckle at the bush growing in the boat that he was supposed to have moved and sold months ago, if not a year ago. And then I drive by it every day because I live down there, and now there's uh, some sort of van there. And I chuckled and pointed out to my daughter, oh, look, the side window on the van is open. It's probably getting rained on. I bet it's smelling really good by now. So maybe someone ought to go over there and close the window on that van, too. We'll do that, sir. Uh, now, he's been a frequent flyer here. He's been here forever. He gets all kinds of breaks from me, but really, he's not a yard guy. You can tell he's not a yard guy because he doesn't do much to his yard. You can tell he's not married because my wife would kill me if I had that many toys in the yard that didn't work. You know, they don't move. He just collects them. I don't know what he's doing with them. Some of them are actually nice vehicles, but they just sit there. Yeah, Special Magistrate, it, if I may, a couple of these have come into compliance. I think even the ones you're referencing, so we're asking for okay. findings of fact. Findings of fact on which? On 9-5, 15-57, and 14-4A. Which are? That's everything except for the driveway and sidewalk stained. Wow. And the screen enclosure. And the screen enclosure, okay. And I've spoken to now Sam on the phone, and he has emailed me in reference to his brother coming here tonight. Okay, and that's fine, but what are they doing with the boat other than just sitting there? The boat's been moved. The boat's been moved over a spot? I mean, did they pull at least the weeds out or the bush out of there? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It's not a great planter. All right, so, so we're just left with drive walk and sideways stain and screen enclosure missing screens? Correct. Right. And we'd ask for compliance by 8 1 or the 8 14 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Okay. So they want to have it fixed by August 1st? Would be fine, sir. Okay. You'll all know. Ordered, granted. Thank you. Splendid. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay. Next case is 19-0550, confidential record, Jeffrey J. and Catherine L. Hamilton. The code section is 2657, canopies without permits. I observed this violation on 41619, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 2, Verification of Ownership, Exhibit 3, Picture, and Exhibit 4, uh, Permit Information, where the permit came in the office today. Okay. Are they even permittable? Yeah. Oh, great. You have a signed green card, you have service? Catherine Hamilton. Thank you, ma'am. 
These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the notice of hearing, the notice of violation, and the signed green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Exhibit three is photograph of the violation. And exhibit four is the village's ISO 400 permit information. Do you have any objections to these documents? Yeah. Thank you. All right, so they've applied for a permit? Yes. All right, so is this another 81814? All right, Ms. Hamilton, you've applied for a permit? Yes. Uh, make sure it gets pushed through so you don't have to deal with code enforcement again. You have until August 1st for the permit to be issued. It was submitted, so hopefully there's enough time for it to be approved. Yeah. Or a $25 a day fine. Or a $25 a day fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank Granted. you. Next. 19-0607-129 Sevilla Avenue, Lyndon Clemens. Code section is 6190A. The description is structure is stained and paint is faded. <clears throat> I observed this violation on 42219, mailed the notice of violation and uh, notice of hearing certified and have actual service by speaking to the resident. I'd like to enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three, pictures. Hmm. I love the photos. It's like a progression shot. Bad, worked on, fixed, almost. Lyndon Clemens. Thank you, sir. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit mm -hmm. one is the notice of hearing, mm -hmm. notice of violation. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Exhibit three is photographs of the violations. Do you have any objection to these documents? They're just the order that they were received in was not correct, but that's a whole nother story. Um, she didn't, she never sent me, I have copies that she never sent this thing here. Um, the courtesy notice, I guess, it says, please clean structure, paint as needed, faded garage door in painted okay. area. But at no point did she, and then when she sent out the actual notice, it's a totally different notice that she sends out with totally different information. And when you call her on the phone, she won't be specific as to what she's talking about. Hold and on, then on, she on, has notified. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Stop. We're, we gotta get the documents in. Okay. And then you can, let's then get you can the documents in, and there's, there doesn't seem to be a big issue here, so let's talk Well, the, the issue is, is treatment and being professional when you deal with people. If you can't stand people asking you questions, you're in the wrong job. Well, I am not the one to talk to about this. Yes, sir. Okay, and then when I you make, as, when you make have, notes to not, somebody as a nuisance I, because I they called you. I am not a supervisor, you. sir. Yes, sir. I, I sent have, them a letter I already. Have no ability to do anything with personnel decisions here. Okay. This is not the proper forum for this. If Which forum is that? Uh, that would be the city manager, city manager or the okay. town council members. Thank you. Sorry? Any to the no, we're fine. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, we're just dealing with the structure and the, the structure all all of and Paint is faded, and I see pictures of issues, it has all been and corrected. I see pictures of partial corrections and what looks like it's a correction. A, it's 100% so. corrected now, sir. Okay, so is it 100% corrected? Finding a fact, yes, sir. Finding a fact is granted. All they're saying now is that you have done this and try not to do it again for five years, so it's not a repeat violation. That's but it's but, okay. but but the rest of your problem is not a problem with me. City, or, you said city manager. That's the one you're going to talk to because this is not where personnel things get done. This is just okay. where code enforcement issues get dealt with. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Great. Special magistrate, before you finalize your order, I just want to make sure on your agenda that the code section is 6-190A. That is what I have. Okay. Thank yes. you, sir. Okay. All right. Finding fact is granted. Yep. You'll get an order in the mail that just says, don't do it again. Right. Because I, I requested a, the compliance order and she never sent that to me anyway, but. That's okay. Yeah. You just complied today. You'll get one tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice to you. Okay, next. Moving to page six, case 19 0944 120 Saratoga Boulevard West, JL Real Acquisitions, LLC. The code sections are 144A and 2318B1. Disabled, unregistered vehicles, and prohibited vehicle parked on the lawn. I observed this violation on 6719. Mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, 
and uh, posted them on the property. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Notice of Hearing, and Affidavit of Service, Exhibit 2, Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 3, Pictures. Okay, <clears throat> you have service via posting, you can proceed. Sir, your name for the record? Jose Legrand. Spell that please, the last name. L-E-G-R-A-N-D. And your relation to the property? The owner. Okay, thank you, sir. These are the exhibits at the village elect entrance evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the notice of violation and notice of hearing. Notice of hearing, notice of violation. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Three, sideways, or photographs of the violations. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Thank you, sir. Okay. Is the big box truck still there? No. Okay, so one but down. This is the second time that one of those has been there. Okay, so there's multiple times that the big box truck has parked A in the front one. yard. Uh, big box truck. Your Honor, if if I may, sure. Uh, with relationship to this uh, truck, it was a it's a moving truck. I'm the new owner. Uh, the truck, if anything transpired in the past, I'm not aware of that. I'm only aware of it from the moment that they gave me the notice. Uh, the truck, which is the moving truck, has been already removed from the oh, property. Well, that's not going to be a problem because this is the time they give you to fix the problem and for that problem's fixed yes that is that's been corrected but that's not the whole of the story here i still have to say oh, i just don't that. want them to claim i, I don't want it, there it to be confusion that it's a repeat. right now it's not a repeat it's okay. not even a violation okay. because it's gone it'll be a finding of facts it'll Mr. Magistrate, for fact code section 23-18 b1 that's okay, prohibited that's... vehicle parked on the lawn that's a finding of fact yeah. For code section 144A, we'd be asking for compliance by 627 or the 710 fine hearing or a hundred dollar a day fine. All right, hold on. What now? Six. 627 compliance. Or the 710 fine assessment hearing, or a one hundred dollar per day fine. All right. So what's the, what's the next violation, Your Honor? The next violation is disabled slash unregistered vehicles. They are so registered. And they're registered they now, but they're still disabled by having a flat tire. Is still disabled by our so, code. It's not drivable. You okay. can't just have a dead car with a good tag on it. Yeah, it, it just. I, I, I want to rectify the issue. It, it just happens to be the old tenant. The tenant, he's got some post-tenant occupancy there. Um, the the. I just want it to be minimized and reduced only to particularly the the tire aspect because the registration aspect has already well, been has already this, been it's it's this the section is describing slash disabled unregistered vehicles that's the section okay whether the vehicle is disabled or whether it's unregistered is still that one okay i just wanted to clarify that it is registered and insured well registered insured is great that all means okay. it just needs to operate okay which means it'd be nice to pump up the tires and turn them around so they can at least prove well, they operate well just for the record the issue there that that remains is one tire that's flat well, then you're going to have to have the tire unflattened by June 27th that, or by, you know, it'll you face a fine on July 10th of $100 a day. So fix the tire, but turn the vehicle around so people can see the tag on the Range Rover and get the other thing, which was a flat tire. I didn't even notice the that. Range, the Range, the Range Rover. Rover. Yeah, yeah, yeah turn the vehicle around on the Range Rover because... You know, they can't see the tag. Well, I can see the tags. That's not a problem. Yeah, no, I, I, just, I see that the tags I just want to make sure that he moves Initially, it so it's Initially, the tag, operable. neither one of those vehicles had a tag on them. Well, good. At least they got, you got, you motivated them to get tagged. Now you can motivate them to move. Yes, yeah, so I just want clarification. What's your expectation of me from this point moving forward is just that the tire. That you fix and, the tire and you turn the thing around so they know it moves and operates. And gotcha. Then, okay. then you're going to call her. And I beg your pardon? You're going to call her, and this goes for everyone in the room, and I should have done this the first violation hearing. If you look at any of the orders I sign, there's only one part of the order that's in bold, and that says when you fix it, you have to call for an inspection because they don't know psychically that you've done it. They need you to call them and say, come by and look, 
and then you get what is known as an affidavit of compliance in your file, and everyone in this room wants an affidavit of compliance in their file. Sure. Okay, so get it done, call her, make sure she comes out there and inspects it before June 27th. Well, the problem, too, is that he has aired up that back tire and it keeps going flat, so that's not going to put it... Oh, no, I just, that's why I'm saying right. fix the tire. And we'll change it, around. whatever he has to do. Whatever, whatever the he tenant has to do. Has to Otherwise, do. you're going to get stuck with a $100 a day fine from 627 till it's fixed. So you don't want that. No. Okay. So how so, much time were you allowing? June 27th. June 27th, 710, $100 a day. Okay. Okay? This is an easy one. Yep. Tires are cheap. Gotcha. Patches, new ones, used ones, whatever. Okay? Granted. Thank you. Next. 19-0469-842, Royal Palm Beach Boulevard, Maryland, J. Jagmahan Singh. Code section is 622108.4, uh, propane tank moved without a uh, without pulling a permit. I observed this on 4319, the notice of violation, notice of hearing. We're mailed out 4319 and we're signed for on 4619. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. Mm -hmm. All right, you have a signed green card. You have service. Marilyn Singh. Thank you. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the hearing, notice of violation with the signed green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. And exhibit three is photographs of the violation. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. So did you move the tank? <laughs> I didn't I, think so. That was just a rhetorical question. No, Florida Gas? Florida Public Utilities. Florida moved Public Utilities. They moved the tank four feet from my house, from the wall. They said they were trying to meet their code. Well, their code is not the village code, but any code requires some sort of permit. And I don't blame you, but you are the only one that they can tag because you are the person whose right. property that is on. Right. And Florida Public Utilities should know that most of these things require a permit. And if they're not doing that, they are either obviously stupid or just avoiding their responsibilities. Right. They say a village of Royal Palm Beach is the only one that requires permits. For well, that. they know then. So they should just get a they're permit. They're claiming they now know that. Oh, no, they've yeah. known that. So <laughs> <You're>, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, you're not the first one, believe me. I've. Yeah, no one ever moves their propane tanks on their own. It's just not what people do. All right, so when are you going to give her till fixes? Compliance by the 8-1. 8-1. Or 814 fine assessment hearing or $25 a day fine. All right, so hopefully your lovely gas provider will get you a permit before August 1st and keep you out of trouble. And you should at least do some wonderful email correspondence to them saying I've appeared at a code enforcement hearing and you need to get this permitted and I find that to be your responsibility so at least you can show those to me later and say I've tried and these people just won't do a thing. I did contract with a new gas company Yeah, well, and they should be applying for a permit they said this week. Good because I can see on my agenda the next case is propane tanks installed without a permit. I mean it's just a small world. Propane followed by propane. So hopefully it will all be taken care of. And just for the record, um, our building official and director actually spoke to Florida Public Utilities a couple weeks ago who was claiming the same thing to us, that they don't need permits. And he directed them to the code that it's the uh, Florida building, building code, code that says, yes, they do need permits. So when they start changing all that stuff out, they do need a permit. Do, wait, do they need a permit to move the tank off my property? Oh. Yes. Okay, because, uh, oh, okay. Yep. So, oh, yeah, they I know. just wanted to let you know that he did speak to them, and he, I think, set them straight on that. So I don't know why they think they're exempt. I mean, basically, it's a bomb in your side yard. Don't you I, think you yes. want someone to inspect your bomb? Right. 
You know, at least to make sure that the, the valves are hooked up properly and your O-rings seal and things of that nature. You know, I would like to know that my bomb's not going to go off. <laughs> yes. All right, you'll get an order in the mail. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Next is 19-04736060 East Court Greenway Village Association Number 1, Inc. Code section 622108.4, propane tanks installed without permits. I observed this on 4319. The notice violation notice of hearing were mailed out on 4419 and were posted. I'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, and affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and exhibit 3 pictures. All right. Well, it's good to see the person in front of you broke the ice for you. <laughs> what, what's your name, please? Um, Terry Westcott, licensed uh, property manager for Greenway Village Association. All right. So is that with an I or a Y? I. And Westcott? Yes, sir. W-E-S-C-O-T-T. -T. I was going to say two T's or a T. All right. And you're the property manager? Yes, you're... sir. Okay. Did we have a property appraiser in here? <clears throat> this is the one that um, we yeah, looked okay. up. Yeah. Exhibit two is photographs of the violation. So yes, I take that back. There's no verification of ownership. There's actually two propane tanks. Okay. One's on East Court, one's on West Court, okay. which Any we will gladly you? accept. Okay. Any objection to these documents? No. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right, admitted without objection. Who's your propane provider? Um, Florida Public Utilities. Um, these actually propane tanks were installed around 1999 or 2000. Mm -hmm. um, they've been on the property 20 years, only to find out now in 2019 that they have no permits. Um, I have been in contact with Linda as well as Todd from the code enforcement and um, been working diligently trying to get Florida Public Utilities even to call us back. Um, on May 17th, I was able to speak to someone. They indicated that they were going to apply for a permit, but have not received any follow-up whatsoever. So the association's attorney, which is Kay Binder-Rimbaum, which I do have a copy of that letter, dated June 10th, um, for exhibits, if you would like it, has written a letter certified request asking for compliance. Um, sure, I'd love to see it. Did Jeffrey sign it? Uh, Peter Mullengarden is the association's yeah. rep. <laughs> uh, I used to hang out with Jeff Rimbaum. Yes, absolutely. So we, uh, we uh, every time I do speak or touch this file in our office, I do correspond with Linda via email. Um, so it's, they're aware of it. I'm just glad to hear that at least FPU has contacted the village two weeks ago. At least, you know, they're contacting somebody. They're not contacting us. Right, and, and given the... And it's 20 years, and they've been our service provider for 20 years. And they're probably... And like paid on time. The majority of the business in, in propane world, so... All right. And no, I did not install the propane tanks on the property. No one ever does. <laughs> but at least they put bollards in front of your ball. Well, and it's ironic that you say that because in 2013, the village at that time, there were no bollards in front of it. So in 2012, 2013, the association did install those bollards as a request of a code violation back then. So when I did meet with code, I, I was surprised that this permit issue wasn't brought up back in 12 or 13 when the bollard issued. But it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, there's no permits and it just yeah, needs to get resolved. It's just a safety thing too. Absolutely. Least, you know, we should the, keep the, them from being run into. Yeah, the, the association does not deny it. We just want compliance just like you. Um, it's just, you know, our service provider, we're at, kind of at their, we're tied right now. Yeah, well, just as, as I told uh, Ms. Singh, email them a lot. Um, I try. No, it's, it's wonderful proof. It's like, here, I've just went to a meeting. You need to get this thing permitted. Yeah, we'll probably have our attorney address that once we get um, any type yeah. of notification after this meeting so I can well, pass it along. I just got to tell you, you're probably cheaper than Jeffrey's rate, so you may want to try doing that yourself, too. All right, 818-1425, yes, granted. Thank you. 
Thank you. What, what's the time frame on it? Uh, August 1st. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Next is 19-0539, 11614 Oleander Drive, Danielle A. Moore. We would like to enter the following, oh, excuse me, sorry. Code section is 622108.4 and 2657. The structure is built without a permit. Shed is also installed without a permit. I observed this on 41419. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out on 416 and were signed for on 41819. I'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership and exhibit three pictures. Okay, you have a signed green card, do you have service? I'm Danielle Moore, owner. Thank you. Are you going to speak, sir? Possibly. Jason, okay. Jason McCaskin. And your relation? Boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank That's you. Fine. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter as evidence. Exhibit one is the notice of hearing, the notice of violation, and the signed green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. And exhibit three is photographs of the violation. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Thank you. All right, admitted without an objection. Uh, Mr. McCaskill, could you spell your last name? I don't know whether you're Scottish or... M-C, capital A-S-K-I-N. M-C, so the Scottish version, or the Irish version. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, um, structure built without a permit. I take it that's the pergola? It kind of looks pergola-ish. In the backyard, yes. And then there's a shed, too? Yes. Okay. All right, they like permits in Royal Palm Beach for structures. I had to permit a playhouse I built in my backyard. It didn't hurt that it was eight feet by 10 feet and 13 feet tall with a roof that matched my house that you couldn't hide from anyone anyway, so, no. Um, I'm, a, I'm just a new homeowner. I've only been there for two years. The shed was there when I bought the house, so I had no idea that there was not a permit pulled for the shed. I did pull a permit for the shed back in April. I still haven't heard anything back from that. Regarding the pergola, I'm trying to pull a permit for now. that, but they're saying it's in the setbacks. But what I don't understand is there's a concrete slab. That's also where the pergola is, and I don't understand why the pergola can't stay on top of that concrete slab if the slab is in the setbacks. Slabs are allowed in the setbacks. Is it a permanent structure? Not with a permanent structure. But it is a permanent structure. But the slabs can be broken up if they need to get so in So can there. a pergola can be unbolted and okay. moved? Okay. We're not going to have an argument here. I'm not trying to argue. Um, just, I'd like to have some clarification of the sense that we're making. All right. So the, the, the clarification is that you can put a slab there, but you can't put a structure there. And that's because so the rest it's of the because it's because you have side setbacks, you have rear setbacks. Sure. In my rear setback, I have my cable, yeah. my FPNL, and then on the side setback, I have the sewer line that goes out to the sewer pipe, and on the other side, I have the water line that comes in. So. But I'm not trying to throw any of my neighbors under the bus, but my neighbors. It doesn't matter. Well, the whole neighborhood has pools, sheds, pergolas everywhere. 15 cars in their driveway. It's... They comply, will comply. Until then, give us a fine. Okay. I'm not, I'm not gonna move the things that were there when the house was purchased. That's All right, that's and ridiculous. what you're gonna end up with is you're gonna end up with saddling your girlfriend here with something that's gonna end up being, I don't know, the biggest fine I've waved down here is $90,000. So you're going to give her a $90,000 fine. I'm going to give her? You're going to give her because you're not going to let her fix this problem. You're going to make sure that I find her, and then you're going to run up a fine that's going to be this big, huge cloud over her house. This is coming from me? Because you don't want to deal with this, or you don't think that this is fair. And it may not be fair, but you have to deal with it. Okay, so we how are. can I fix it without taking my pergola down? You can't, unless you get a variance. Now you can try to get a variance. There's a long, lengthy procedure. How long does it take? Two, three months? Yeah, it's public hearing, so it's a... Two or three month procedure? Month. Yeah. Hey, could I possibly just move the pergola? You could possibly just move the pergola to an area that's not in a setback and get it permitted, and that would be lovely, and it would take care of all the problems. But if okay. you want to go to war, that's fine too. It's all no, good. I, I don't, don't want to go to war, I, I but mean, I mean... I'm, I'm just sitting here going, they say that it's in the setback, it's in the setback, it's not allowed. 
I guess my biggest my hands argument are tied. is just the concrete slab. If the that concrete slab is there. lovely there, but they're of the opinion that you just go in there and you just take a jackhammer, you break it up, and you can get to whatever water line or sewer line or power line's there. So they have made a decision as a village. Now, you can try to go through the, the process of getting a variance, and you may or may not. I do not know. I have never tried. Okay. okay? But the simplest thing is to move it out of there until you get to the point where you can put it somewhere else. The shed, I, I feel sorry for everyone, and I always ask who puts the shed in because it's usually not the people well, who are getting tagged for it. Well, this is the first time I bought a home. This, uh, this is my very first home that I've ever no bought, one so I know No nothing. one ever researches this stuff it. other than attorneys like me. About that. I mean, but I did apply for the shed permit. I, I have that here. They actually um, notified you, or I don't know if they made a phone call, but on 5-7 it says, please resubmit with setback measurements from property line minimum setback on side side should be 10 feet minimum setback on rear 10 feet. I never so received you, a phone call an email. Can ha okay, before anything, anything can happen with your okay, shed. Okay, so you need to go out there with a tape measure and just measure from your okay. fence line to the shed and, and just take a picture. The big issue is too is I have the pool back there which takes up a lot of my backyard. Understood. And unfortunately, you know, it's not the acreage where we have a lot of extra room for things. You know, a lot of these, Oleander, I don't even, what, what neighborhood are you in? What's Oleander? Palm Beach County, or Colonial. Um, okay, um, that's not small. That's not terribly small. There are places in the village that are just tiny, that you can't even put anything in. Hopefully you can get it all situated so it works. Okay, so with the shed, what do I need to do? You just need can, to go okay, measure yes. and go in there and, and resubmit saying that it's 10.2 feet or 10 feet 3 inches from this wall or this back fence and whatever feet from the side fence. Okay. Okay? okay. And are we back in August for this one, 818? Sure, 81 or 814 or $25 a day fine. You can um, notify the building department tomorrow and they'll go over exactly what you need for your shed permit. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, you'll get an order in the mail. So 8-1, eight, eight try to get it all straightened out. You're welcome. Thanks. Moving to page 7, case 19-0567-778, Carissa Drive, Jose A. Martinez. Code section is 2318-B3-B-622-108.4, parking on the front lawn and work being done without a permit. I observed this on 4-18-19. The notice of violation and notice of hearing were mailed out 4-18-19 and were posted at the property. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you have service via posting. You can proceed. <clears throat> yeah, these are. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put these into evidence as well. He, uh, the resident, actually gave us those. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we're not, we have additional photos. Those are from the resident. Those are the from the resident. resident. All right. Jose Martinez. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the notice of hearing and the notice of violation. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Exhibit three is photographs of the violations. And exhibit four is going to be photographs, I believe, that you took and provided to the code compliance department. Do you have any objections to these documents? No. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we have an F-150 out front. Thank you. Yes, sir. I had almost that exact same truck. I spent all this time, sanded the roof off of it, painted it nice and pretty so it was all black again. My daughter was sitting up waiting for its stoplight going to the Palm Beach Mall, or no, the Garden Mall. Someone just rear-ended the car behind her, hit her, jackknifed the truck. Sad to see it go. But you need to park that thing on the driveway. Yes, I spoke to her, and then she made that clear. 
And um, who's doing the work? Are you doing it? Is the property owner doing it? I just well, took down. The the, I just took down a, a wall that uh, when you walk in, it's just real tight. So. All right. Well, you need to go get a permit for that. And you're the owner of this house. Yes. And is this your homestead? Yes. So you can get an owner builder for it. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So you just pull an owner builder permit. Once it's issued, you're you're done with us until you, uh, you know, go through your inspection process. If you make it through the inspection process, you're totally done. Okay. So just pull a permit for the interior. Would this be an interior renovation or something like that? It should be easy. It really shouldn't really. I don't know. I don't know if it requires engineering or not. They'll go over that with you, but you do need to get a permit for it if you're changing walls around. Okay. All right. All right. Eight one eight fourteen twenty five. Okay. Um, apply as soon as you can, because the process takes a while to go through, and they may say you you may or may not need engineering. You, you took down a wall. Is that what yes, you said? Yes, I just took down the wall for the kitchen. Yeah, it, it, I don't know if there was electrical there. I don't know if there was plumbing there. Someone will want to make sure it's all capped off right. So you may just want to stop what you're doing and get it permitted before it's all dried in because they'll make you cut holes in there to show them stuff. Okay? Okay. Thank you. 818 is granted. Thank you. Moving to the top of page 8, case 19-0528-1131, Harmony Way, Ashley R. Simmons. Code sections 2317 and 2318B, parking on or over the sidewalk, parking on the front lawn. I observed this violation on 41119, sent out a notice of violation, a notice of hearing on 41119. They signed for it on 41319. I'd like to enter those following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Okay, you have a signed green card, you have service. Hi. For the record, Ashley Simmons. Thank you. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the notice of hearing, mm -hmm. the notice of violation, signed green card. Okay. And exhibit two is proof of ownership from the property appraisal website. And exhibit three is for I don't even know what that is. Those are our cars. Any objection yeah. to these documents? No. Okay, thank you. All right, admitted without objection. Well, I do have one. I don't know whose car that is. <laughs> the, all the other pictures have our cars, but I don't right, know. Which one doesn't she know? All right, so that's the long, okay, so one parked over the sidewalk. Okay, but there are other pictures. But I'm of, not saying we've never parked over the side, sidewalk. I'm just yeah, saying just, that I have no clue whose car that is. Yep. All right, so it looks like you're parking over the sidewalk. Well, this you, is what happened. Um, can I explain? Sure, go ahead. Okay, I live in Counterpoint, and the driveways are very small, and it's a habit. You pull one car in, and then the other car. So, yes, in order to fit our two vehicles in the driveway, we were blocking the sidewalk and I got a notice for it and I called and I was like, can you please come out and, oh, and then we parked in the grass so I wouldn't block the sidewalk. And I got this, you know, cause I got well, a notice there, there's first. parking in the grass, which is in the swale, which is allowed as long as you no, park No, I it. parked to the right. So I did have her come out and show me. I was like, where can I park? You know, because we can't park two cars in my driveway, which is kind of crazy. You know, we don't have big cars. Um, so she told us to park sideways. Well, you have to park with in the, the flow swale. of traffic. Yeah, with the flow of traffic. Uh, well, I have two teenage drivers. So the swale's already taken by one child. And uh, so then I would have two cars in the driveway. So she told me to park sideways. So I have been complying. Um, I've got my teenagers. I'm like very strangling them. Uh, do not just be lazy and pull in the driveway. You have to park sideways. But I want to let you know, I'm just being honest here, from where we have to pull in is a swale. And we have to drive over that swale to pull in sideways. So I feel like it's 
damaging. You can see the road, like kind of peeling away. I'm just being honest. Yeah, well, you're being honest, but it's still in violation. You know, the easiest solution is to build a bigger driveway. Well, I'm a single mom with three kids, oh. and I can't. One oh. child is going to college in August, so I'll have one car less um, than the three cars that we have now. Um, but I did ask her where we can park. So ever right. since I did ask, we've been invite. We par we pull in sideways. It looks silly. It looks absolutely ridiculous because we pull in sideways at the bottom of the driveway. Oh. But. You know, I walk my dogs around the neighborhood. I like walking my dogs on the sidewalk. I don't like walking them on the street. Yeah, it's a I, safety thing. Yeah, I completely yeah. understand. So, But the parking in the yard was me trying to correct the sidewalk. I was trying not to park in the sidewalk. Right. So okay. then well, when it I, sounds like you just, well, what is our dates now, 8-1? Yeah, it combines by 8-1 or the 8-14 fine here in your $25 day fine. I'm going to make this one just slightly different to make you crazy. No, 8-7. It gives her... You're leaving at the 1st of August, the kid? Uh, actually, August 10th, he leaves. He's going to Iowa. It doesn't give me a lot so. of time there for the August 10th hearing. I'm trying to That's bump it. So the, well, I mean, yeah. whatever you're hearing, say the 14th. Right, we're, gonna, we're not going to be parking over the sidewalk or in the grass anymore. I mean, oh, no, I'm giving way. you until 810, so if they screw up, at least, you know, they'll be out of there by the end of the period. Okay. But you just need to make sure Margaret comes by there one day and sees everything good so you can get your affidavit of compliance and then tell your children yes uh, please i mean anyone not... with teenagers can understand and i as... have a 19 year old and a 15 year old daughter but i have so... one more thing um as i called my i didn't i forgot about tonight so i came straight from work i called my kids and told them i was coming here and my son told me oh yeah i have this ripped up notice that i got on my car that was rained on so is there anything in my file showing I have a ticket? Anything or? that would be put on the car would be from the, the sheriff's office. Okay. Um, most of the time they are warnings. Okay. So you would have to contact Is them. there an HOA out there that cares? No, there's no HOA. Okay, so then it's just going to be it's the sheriff's department or someone else. It's not code enforcement. Okay. Code I enforcement just... leaves door tickets. They don't Yeah, the only time tickets. I would leave it on a vehicle is mm -hmm. if I didn't know where the vehicle belonged. Okay, and just for the record, I fixed when I just moved in. I mean, the pressure cleaning. Anytime they ask me to do anything, I do everything right away. Um, okay. And I tried to correct the parking, and I got another <laughs> notice for it. So everything okay. is correct now. So eight ten, eight fourteen, twenty five, and hopefully every someone will be off to college by then, and you'll have a little so by, easier situation. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, next. Still got a pile of people here. 19-0564-10683, Aquarius Lane, Progress Residential Borrower 1, LLC. Code sections 15132, Swell and Yard have bare, bare areas. I observed this violation on 41517. So now notice the violation notice of hearing on 41719. They assigned for it on 42219. Like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice the violation notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. All right, you have a signed green card. You have service. Who are you, sir? Kendall Gill. Kendall Gill. What was the first name? Kendall. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. And what is your position with Progress Residential Borough 1, LLC? Maintenance technician. Maintenance technician. As this for 138. And you're not here for any of the other progress residential That's more, um, cases. I didn't know. We didn't know about it. They say, well, I'm sorry. I didn't know about it until I arrived. Yeah. Until I arrived tonight and saw the listing of it. Because the only thing they knew about was 138 Dover, which I am here for. Uh, That's not this I'm one. A, Do you want to speak to this one? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. I thought it was Dover. But I mean, you have a list of eight of them. And the ninth um, one is. Well, some are five. And some are no, five. He's not here for, he's not here for this Aquarius. All right, so he's not here for this one. Where, where is this one? Right below. Right below. Ah, just move everything down one. It'd be the next one, 138 Dove. Yep, case 19 0568 138 Dove Circle Progress Residential Borrower 1 LLC. 
Code Section 2318B 0619A135, parking on the front lawn, sidewalk, and driveway are stained. I observe this violation on 41819. Send out notice of violation notice of hearing on 41819. They signed for it on 42219. Like to have the following documents and evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Exhibit 4, affidavit of compliance. All right, so show them the stuff. You have service via signed green cards. Okay. Exhibit three is the like to evidence. Exhibit one is the notice of hearing. Can I see who the signed card is from? Who signed it? Who signed it? Okay. Scott's down. So exhibit one, as I was saying, notice of hearing, notice of violation, mm -hmm. signed green card. Yes, ma'am. Exhibit two, of ownership. Exhibit three, photographs, violation. Mm -hmm. And exhibit four is affidavit of compliance. Any yep. objection to these documents? No. Thank you, sir. Okay, so it's finding fact. Finding fact. It's good to show up for the one out of the eight where it's done. Well, like I said, we would have showed up for those if I knew about, knew about oh, those. Here, but... I talked to my supervisor about it. They said they didn't know about any of those for their violations. So we're going to address oh. those. I'm sure they did somewhere. Someone had somewhere. to sign. Someone had to sign for it. I see that's in our home office in Scottsdale, Arizona. So that's okay. Oh. But all the violations sir, are taken care of on 138. I have pictures of. Yeah, we, we, we don't agree disagree that 138 is good. It's just. Okay. 10683 yes, Aquarius seems to be a problem. And I understand that. Well, that'll be addressed as. Hey, let's see what else we evening. have. We have 1306 La Mancha. And, you know, if they're going to show up for one, they should show up for more than one. Just tell them that. I, I can't argue with that. I'm, I'm just not, saying I'm they would have been taken care of, I guess. You're just the maintenance guy, but, yep. you know. Take care of it. Go ahead. If they're going to show up for one, you know, they got seven more, tell them they should show up for the other seven, too. They may want to look at them. Okay. Thank Order you, granted. Yep. Thank you. Finding a fact. Is it possible I get the copy of those other ones or no? On the other violations? Um, not right now. You we have, have an agenda out front. I, I don't know if there's an agenda, but he needs. We have a, a bunch more cases to get yeah. through by eight o'clock, so he can. Can you call the code compliance officer, and she can get you. She'll sure. email one to you, or she'll fax one to you. If you can find an agenda, you, that'll that'll be, that'll that'll show them all. Well, this isn't the place for it. Top of page nine, case nineteen eight six eight one zero two three three Okeechobee Boulevard, Cobblestone Village at Royal Palm Beach. The code section is 1612A. The description irreparable, irreversible violation, special event was held without a special event permit. Grills, sign, tents, balloons were all set up in the parking spaces and part of the drive aisle. The setup was impeding traffic. This notice of violation was mailed certified mail on 528, 2019. It was signed for on 531, 2019. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation and notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. And exhibit three, pictures. Jeez. All right, sign green card equals service. Stephen Gagel, G A G E L. In your relation to the property? Um, we were, I represent Paradise Grills. We were the people having a tent sale. Okay. Do you have anything with you authorizing you to speak on behalf of Cobblestone? Um, I have a space agreement that we had with them. And I got an email from them Monday asking me if I was going to attend here today. And I told them I was. Okay. Do you, do you have that email with No, I chance? don't. Okay. He doesn't have anything. He has a copy of the lease, but no actual documentation. I'll leave to you. Uh, let him. Let him speak. Okay. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is a notice of hearing, notice of violation, again signed green card. Mm -hmm. Exhibit two, proof of ownership, and exhibit three, photographs of the violation. Okay. 
in that one? No, I think it's just in the blue. Oh, in the some background. balloons? Yeah, balloons okay. and stuff in the background. Same thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Any objection to these documents? No. Thank you. Okay. I was wondering who put up the tent out there by Target. I now know. So. Take it away, Village. So I wrote the violation on 528. Um, I had gone out there and spoke with um, one of the gentlemen running the, t the tent. He actually put me on the phone with Mr. Gagel. Um, at that point, they, uh, you know, I informed them that they were in violation and that it needed to be corrected. Um, Miss Foley had actually seen it over the weekend, um, but on the 28th, it was written. Okay. And what do you want? Because I see the irreparable, irreversible part up there. Correct. So we're asking right. that you find this to be an irreparable and irreversible, which makes sense because the tent comes and goes. It's not something that can be um, as easily corrected. Um, as the code supervisor indicated, it was out of compliance for seven days. So we'd be asking for a fine uh, of $500 a day for each of those seven days for a total of $3,500 and not continuing. And as you know, Special Magistrate under uh, Chapter 162, for this type of fine, the fine amount could be as high as $5,000 per day. I know. I did a $5,000 one in that parking lot, too. So, and actually, it ended up being a $15,000 fine in that parking lot. In that parking lot? In that parking lot. Do you have, can I ask a question? Sure. Do you have any record of us filing for a permit? Do you have any record of you filing for a permit? Well, that's, that's, that's our problem because I inherited this situation, but I have copies of permit apps. So I was just trying to, that were supposedly sent in either May 2nd or May 7th. Um, we may want to look at those. Well, special event permits are supposed to be in 30 days prior to the event. Okay. So even at that, that would not have been enough time because as I stated, I wrote it on the 28th. So they actually um, were out there a couple days before. So you didn't even have enough time to um, get the special event permit processed. Okay. <clears throat> so so technically, they, could have tagged you for they more should have rejected anything. I'm sorry. Technically, anything that tried to come in the office should have been rejected without enough time to do it. They don't entertain it. So, I don't see a permit. Well, they they don't have a permit. Do you? We have a no permit that they know of. No, that would have had a. That, that's a separate process. It goes in front of council. It front of it's council. a big. Correct. It okay. goes through TRC and then in front of council. Oh, that's CSR that's a big deal. You have to get the village TSR. council TSR, to approve that. So. And as, obviously not done right and as the code supervisor indicated if an application did come in but the uh, amount of time to process the application was less than 30 days before they, the event they, they, they would have rejected it because it. You, right. you can't be approved so so it would typically come in to our village clerk and our village clerk would kick it not take it yeah okay so yeah i did a a five thousand dollar a day fine there for three days, I believe, on the top taste restaurant case where we had multiple police officers in here testifying about the wonderful party they were having out there a few times. Um, do you have any response? I mean, I'm sitting here. I've got you know, we don't have a issue. We don't have a. I can't even say we. They don't have anything that shows that they got anything from us. Okay. Anything from you. And then you had that out there, and then you were told on the 28th not to do it, and it continued on for another six days? Six days. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's one of those. Can I say something sure. regarding that? Okay. Um, that was Memorial Day week, and um, 
we do a lot of tent sales and home shows across the state and across the whole eastern company uh, part of the country and it usually takes us once we're we're out we're scheduled out with all of our delivery crews about two weeks and so in order to remove that tent or remove the components from the tent our components so there's a third party tent company that acts as our contractor for the tent so we have to remove all the into all the outdoor kitchen units that are under the tent and then they the next day they come and take the tent away so that's why we were out of there six days we were out of there five days but the tent was there the sixth day anyway that week we we had a lot of people on vacation because of the holiday we also ran into uh drive times for all of our drivers beyond the ones that were working um, in order to you know, meet the requirements of how much time you can be on the road and not be on the road. So we, there was no way we were going to be able to remove that tent immediately that day with zero minutes, zero time to remove it. And like I said, normally it takes three to five days for us to get out of, up, out of a place. So well. that's why we were there so long. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, well. And Special Magistrate, if I may, just for the record, uh, that Specific section of the code 1612A very specifically says that applications have to be in more than 30 days before the event. So well, I think this is going to be a very expensive lesson for somebody because, you know, they were warned. And you know, if at least they would have started moving everything out. I mean, I drove through there. I go to Target all the time. They were there for, you know, a good week. We were there until Sunday. Yeah. I was there when we closed down. Yep. Seven days, $500 a day, $3,500. Kind of stuck with it, so thirty-five hundred dollars granted. Thank you, thank you, sir. How do I go about making that restitution? Um, you will pay it after the order is entered, and it won't be entered for a few more days. They have fifty or seventy of these things to draft. I usually sign them on Mondays, so you'll be able to show up sometime after Tuesday and deal with it. Up Otherwise, up there's week. no no order to attach a check to, and they'll throw that away or kick it back out. Right. So okay. All right. All right. Thank and you. I, I make that payment where? Uh, Village of Royal Palm Beach over in the <laughs> building. Okay. Building department slash code enforcement. Okay. Next. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Moving now to fine mitigation hearings. Case 18 0337 9200 Belvedere Road, number 103, Gloria Guao Professional Group, LLC. Right to enter into evidence. Exhibit 1, request for fine mitigation. Exhibit two, order assessing fine. Exhibit three, affidavit of compliance. And exhibit four, verification of ownership. All right, this is the portion of our program where you tell me why, why the uh, fine should be reduced and you get to go first. So why should the fine be reduced? And if you, before you begin, if you could state oh. your names for the record, please. My name is Gloria Guo. And my name is Mohammed Islam. I am the general contractor. I'm going to be talking on behalf of Ms. Gloria Go. Your last name, sir, was? Islam. I-S-L-A-M. Mohammed Islam. Mohammed. Special Magistrate, for your notes, the fine amount is $18,400. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why should the fine be reduced? Honorable Magistrate, uh, they have hired, I, I actually got hired in December, so that's when, uh, she, he's a friend of mine, and he's the business owner for that uh, spade that she's renting. So they actually uh, called me and notified me that you know, they have a letter in the uh, mail that they, the sign that was actually installed did not have the permit or anything. So I actually came to the uh, village. And uh, I talked to Miss uh, Lou and uh, whoever was there, so they told me exactly what was going on. So I contacted H and R Block and uh, through them. So I got all the paperwork, and then we get the finally we get the permit approved. The gentleman who was hired, he said he already did the permit. Uh, then when they contacted him, he said, "Oh, his license uh, insurance was expired, so he could not uh, call in for the uh, permit applications or whatever." So now I got involved in December and I got everything uh, pretty much uh, rectified and we have the permit in hand and they also have their business uh, license also issued. So everything uh, has been uh, When was rectified. the permit issued? Uh, permit was issued in April, sir. April 30th. Okay, so from December through April. Yes, sir. Your prior order was actually dated June of 2018. Yeah. 514. Right, which required compliance by 
presumably a dude in it. This is the fine assessment order. What oh, do I let me get the violation order? <laughs> Compliance date was April 26th. April 26th of 2018? 2019. Yeah, and actually, this, I have the wrong date on here. It's at, your prior order date was actually 415, not 615. 416, and we required compliance by 426. Okay, so it was April of last year, right? Oh, correct, of 2018, and they complied in... 2019. Said. And around April of 2019. April Took you a year. 2019. And, and she used to show up for these things, and then she quit. You know, she used to come here. I remember you. You were here with your accounting stuff. You know, we had some stuff going on. And then you just stopped showing up and let it all pile up. And now you're coming in here saying, I need help. Not cool. And so you basically let it slide for a year. And now you're saying, well, I showed up in December, and I got it fixed by April. Now what do you want? Why should the fine be reduced? What type of reduced amount are you talking about? Why? It's for the it's for the sign, right? This well, it's for for the sign. I mean, you do know signs need to be permitted, right? Yeah. Well, I didn't know they they don't have they didn't file permit because we. But you got noticed for the violation. You got noticed for the fine hearing. She contacted the uh, the guy, uh, original contractor that she had hired through through them, and he said he was applying for the permit. Yeah, he says he's working then, on it. And then they contacted again when they got the violation letter. He said, well, his license was expired, and he's waiting for the insurance to reinstate, so he comes back. Then he never you know, stopped answering the phone. Then he, they called me. Then I came in a connection. So from... April through December, it was just like, oh, yeah, I can't do this. And now you show up, and it takes another four or five months because to get all this document that I had to collect from h and Block through them, because the sign was a kind of like, you know, because I had no documents, so I had to collect everything. And actually, I submitted for the paperwork uh, with the village back in December. Then Mr. Kevin went through everything, so he needed more documents. So I, I collected, you know, pretty much everything okay. that he needed. What is the village's position with regards to this request? The village would be amenable to reducing this fine to a total of $4,187.28. You're lucky because I was going to reduce it not at all, but I'll reduce it whatever they say because they'll do it. So $4,187.20 by... You could have that payable by, in 60 days would be eight nineteen. By eight nineteen. And if you don't pay the $4,187.20, by eight nineteen, it goes and reverts back to the 18400 Okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Next. 18-1739-291 River Bluff Lane, Alejandro Tarbay. Okay. Invite to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, Request for Fine Mitigation, Exhibit 2, Order Assessing Fine, Exhibit 3, Affidavit of Compliance, and Exhibit 4, Verification of Ownership. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, how much is the fine here? Uh, the fine amount is $1,950. Yeah, at least it's a small one. All right, so we had a disabled unregistered vehicle and dealer plates on car show signs of operating business out of home. Can you state your names for the record? So, yeah, my name is Ratsil Rodriguez. I'm uh, representing Alejandro Tarbay. Can you spell your first name for me? 
R A T Z I L. Last name? Rodriguez. Okay, and you were representing him. How? Are you an attorney? Are you a friend? What's the deal? I'm a, a, a family member. Family member, yeah. okay. Do you have a letter for it? The, yeah, we it yeah, he's in the record. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I, I thought you showed it. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yep. So we have a letter. He's. Okay. No, that's, that's fine. Not, that's just a fine mitigation request. That's not a letter authorizing him. Yeah, to there speak. should be a letter of authorization in there. Yeah. 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 We have it. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Okay. I just want to make sure it's in. All right. So why should the fine be reduced? Well, uh, first of all, Mr. Alejandro is uh, apologizing for the late response. He doesn't live in the country, and unfortunately, uh, he have uh, very occasions that when he uh, stop by and check all the mails, and happens to be by Christmas time, and uh, we immediately took action. I contact the village uh, right away. Uh, first of all, to to address the issue, and also to understand what what needs to be done. So, Alejandro is a property owner. Uh, Mr. Greg Prey, that is with me today, uh, he is a tenant, and uh, with your permission, I would like to uh, allow him to, to talk about the uh, situation with the vehicle, but I just want to express uh, from Alejandro's side uh, that his late response is because he simply doesn't live in the country. And uh, Okay, well, that's fine. Yeah, but as soon as we get the letter, uh, I immediately contact the village, and I have been actively... Uh, in contact with Lou and some others here so, uh, to understand what, uh, how to address this situation. Okay. All right. State your name for the record, please. Gregory Pry. Spell your last name. P-R-Y. Gregory. And you're the tenant? Yes, sir. All right. What do you need to say, sir? I am a licensed dealer. The car was up for sale. And... I never got any notice that it was any type of violation for the car. When I finally did hear from Ratzil, the next day of the car, I moved it. I took it out to my son's house. Okay. The, the question they have, though, is do you have a business location where you're doing these things? I am a licensed dealer. Yes. I have... At the time, I was co-owner of GT Auto Brokers out of Anderson, South Carolina, which is where the dealer tag was from. It's a legitimate. No, I'm not concerned about the business or its legitimacy, really. I'm just saying. But I do know business out of, I buy the car. I was buying cars down here, putting them on a transport and sending them to South Carolina. Okay. Well, I'm That car I was driving with the dealer tag. Okay, because, all right, what's the village's position? Did they give you a fine amount? No, it's $1,950. It's probably under your cost, right? Yeah, we, we would be willing to reduce this to $780.48, payable by the 819-19 date. Okay, 740, 780.48. By eight nineteen, I'll reduce it from the nearly two thousand dollars to under eight hundred. You know, for me. Well, it's going to be tagged against the property. Whether you pay off the property owner is between you guys. The issue that I have is I never got any. Why didn't I get a notice? Because the state statute provides that the notice has to be sent to the address on the tax collector's roll. The state assumes that the tax collector's role is a good address because people who are paying their property taxes usually get their mail there. So they do not, you know, I don't know what the address on the property, I don't know what the address was, but I know that they send it to that address. That's why they show you these papers from Papa. So they probably send it to the property owner who may or may not have paid attention and told you. He, he has uh, sent to a Miami address. It's actually uh, his sister address, but... She pretty much collect all the mail until he comes, he by comes and see it. To, well, to the country, and that's why. It, uh, so he's gotten a heck of a discount here. It's almost, you know, it's well over half off for something he should have taken care of if he would have opened his mail. You know? 
I understand. So we're we're trying to see the possibility if I can receive the mail uh, on my house. All you have him, to but... do is change the address yeah. at the tax collector's office, and that will be the new address. Right. Yeah, we can't. We can't change. No, it. no, we I have... understand that. I'm so just you... saying that we are now addressing that situation and see if we can get better. Right. So that. you need to just change the tax collectors or the address of the tax collectors, okay? But I've reduced it to seven hundred eighty dollars and forty-eight cents if it's paid by eight nineteen. Otherwise, it goes back to the nineteen fifty. Thank you. Okay. Next is seventeen dash one five seven one eight ninety three Orchid Drive, Jason Fodder. For some reason, you just don't look like a Jason to me. Good evening, Adriana Clemens uh, for Harrington Legal Alliance on behalf of the owner, new owner of the property, TDCF1 LLC. All right, you're going to have to start over. Adriana? Clemens, C-L-A-M-E-N-S. I would have given you an extra E, so that's <laughs> good. All right, and you are an ESC? I'm sorry? You're an attorney? Yes, correct. Good, okay. And you represent... Someone and, other than Jason Potter, so I take it that you have a certificate of title or some sort of deed from Mr. Potter? Yes, we do. All right. What was the name of your entity? It's a T, as in Thomas, D, C, F, as in Frank, 1, LLC. Thank you. Okay. Now, what is the amount of the fine? She, she's got to read some stuff into the record. Oh, okay. I'd like Go to ahead. enter the following end evidence. Exhibit 1, order assessing fine. Exhibit 2, letter requesting fine mitigation. Exhibit 3, affidavit of compliance. Exhibit 4, verification of ownership. Okay. Certificate of title, April 19. Okay. The amount of the fine is eleven thousand nine hundred and seventy-five dollars. All right, Ms. Clements, why should the fine be reduced? So, by way of background, the previous owner abandoned the property. He defaulted on his mortgage and ultimately lost his property in foreclosure. Our client purchased the property at the lender's foreclosure action back in March of this year, and he obtained the certificate of title on um, April fourth, two thousand nineteen. And then in 20 days, he brought the property in, into compliance and he immediately contacted the village and he was um, in constant communication as to bringing the property into compliance. Um, he manicured the landscape and power washed the driveway. And immediately upon curing the violations, he got the inspector to go and verify, confirm that everything was uh, back on track. Now, the fines that resulted um, from this case were incurred by the previous owner. The whole purpose of the foreclosure action, so when the um, senior lien holder foreclosed on the property and the city was made a party to the foreclosure action, the city filed an answer and affirmative defenses. And what it asked for was that in the event that there was any surplus funds, that such surplus funds would be allocated to the village. Now, when that foreclosure action took place and when the village had an opportunity to participate in the foreclosure action, it's interest or its lien, its junior liens were extinguished. So as a matter of law, this our client should not be paying anything. Now, to settle this matter and in order to avoid for us to have to come to this hearing, we did offer to pay $750, which would cover hard costs. Those were the cost of um, mowing the lawn. Uh, but other than that, our client should not be responsible for this. If anything, the village should if anything, the village should want people like my client uh, buying these properties in the foreclosure because there was a prompt action on our client's side to cure all existing violations. Our client has cooperated extensively with the code enforcement officer. Our client has done a terrific makeover on the property. And there is a appreciable increase in the property and the neighborhood because of what was done to the property. Okay. All right, so I, I hear responses, but they need to be on the record, so. Yeah, just for the record, I guess the um, amount that was purported by counsel here was to satisfy other cases, not this particular case number. Okay, so it was it was for, for lawn mowing? Two other cases, correct. For two other cases and not for this case? Correct. That's correct. Okay, so there are other abatement orders I signed, which ran up $286 in costs a couple, three times to mow the grass because they weren't mowing the grass and there finally was this case 
which came out and did more than just abate property. It actually did code enforcement fines for issues. And as I explained to you, uh, representative for your client, I don't believe it was you. No, it was Estrella um, Parada. I'm sorry? Estrella Parada. Yes. Um, we're, the, we're not disputing that you foreclosed on it and you could move forward with your certificate of title but you guys want the lien reduced. And in order to do that, we don't, you know, Florida state statute doesn't require us to reduce, to, uh, I'm sorry, the lien released and Florida state statute doesn't require us to do so. I understand that, but our position is that the lien has been extinguished by the foreclosure sale. And that's fine. You can move forward. But I don't have to sign an order reducing it to zero, do I? Correct, nor does the village have to release the lien. That's So I just here. have to take no action? Or well, we actually would be amenable to reducing the lien amount or the fine amount to $2,813.97, payable by, again, the 819 date. And that will get her the lien release that she is seeking. All right, 2,813.97 by 819 is granted. Thank you. Whatever you do with it, you do with it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is 19 129 Morgate Circle, Rocia del Pilar sends. Um, I don't think she's here right now. Yep. So. Okay, next is 17 0842 119 South State Road 7, Hall or Hale Properties, LLC. Mm -hmm. Number 20. Do you have the new mitigation request? Of course. Okay. And I have handouts. Ooh, -ee. I left me handouts. Before you give those to him, let's get who you are on the record. So I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. I have the order assessing fine, the verification of ownership. I have the authorization form allowing Mr. Millar, right? Oh, correct to speak um i had a fine mitigation request it was for the 12th i thought they were going to be bringing another one in because we changed our hearing date i know a couple times so i am i don't have that yeah I'm trying to find it now. All right, so. Um, the authorization form does give him permission to speak for this hearing, though. Okay. Look at this. At least I get the spellings right. So we don't actually have a fine mitigation request? No. I had one. It was for the. It's 10 or something. Yeah, the wrong date because we moved our hearing, so. I had emailed and asked them to bring in. Sir, can you say your name for the record? My name is Chuck. The last name is Millar. M-I-L-L-A is an alpha R. I'm a senior project manager with Kimley Horn and Associates, and I'm here representing Hill Properties the fee simple owner of the property. And if you'd be kind enough to hand out the uh, presentation, I can walk you through this. Uh, sure. Write everybody a copy, and we can like to enter that for the record. I'll let anything in. I'm easy. <clears throat> We're PowerPoint people, but I understand you we can't use a... Nah. No, the village has restricted I understand. You... its employees from using USB. Uh, well... Case in point, Riviera Beach is going through that right now. Yep. I understand. Huge, huge. Yeah, they're, they're having Bitcoin issues. Yeah. I used to hire Kim Lee Horn alumni as traffic engineers. James Zook. Very good man. I've known Mr. Zook for many years. And then Mr. Donaldson. John, John Donaldson's also uh, very been established for a long time. Good guys. Yep, yep. So 
Special Magistrate, if I may, just in the interest of time, please remember that we have probably 40 cases still left on the agenda. Okay, so order. let's roll. All right, so it? we'll go through this. So I'm going to start with the B. So as indicated, we are um, here representing Hill Properties, LLC. The second page, as I'll walk you through, this is our request. We're seeking elimination of any and all fees and fines and or costs which have accrued with respect to case number 17-0842. And I will justify my request here briefly. Third page is generally a project location. Uh, we're in the Lowe's Plaza, known as Parcel 1A in the Lowe's Home Center. Um, that just gives you just a general location of the property. Fourth page is the project fact sheets with respect to the alleged code violation. I'm gonna walk through these for the record because uh, this is a rather unique situation. Hill Properties purchased the property on January 12th of 2017. Hill then went, moved forward and secured Village Council approval via application 16-07 through resolution 1631 on April 20th, which essentially, by way of the Orlando Development Code, approved an automobile service facility. Hill spent substantial monies in professional fees, services, and goods, relying on the Village Council approval to move forward in good faith with the project. On August 9th, there was a hearing, I assume before you, sir. Uh, which was conducted without Hale's knowledge, presence, or representation. Just for the record, Hale's address is in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, I do not believe there was a representative present at that hearing in August, and I believe the fine was assessed beginning on that day. I cannot speak to you why they didn't have anyone here at that time. All I know is that we had a question with respect to the validity of certificate of service, uh, but I'll move along. Uh, we were cited uh, under Section 15-141 of the Code of Ordinances, which applies to, I believe, maintenance, inspection, irrigation, and xeroscaping your code. Uh, Hale, on the purchase of the property, which took place uh, in recorded on the January 12th of 2017, they paid $1.8 million for the property. Hale fully intended to demolish what was the old AT&T store uh, and rebuild a new discount tire facility. Uh, at that point in time, during the, uh, the demolition pro process, we had to disconnect all the utilities, so we had no ability to irrigate the landscaping. It was going to be a demolition site and then a construction site. So it really wasn't a reasonable request to restore the landscaping when it was going to be under the consideration of both bulldozers, equipment, and construction. We did move forward with the project. We're very proud of it. Hale received the building permit to commence construction on March 1st of 2018, and Hale did receive the certificate of occupancy recently on April 12th of 2019. We hope you go there for your tire service. The next page is a reference to the section of the code that we were cited. Uh, I included some elevations of the building, uh, just so you can see that we, we did spend, we as representing Hale spent considerable dollars in moving this forward. They paid 1.8 million for the properties I mentioned. Uh, the last few pages just represent some of the pictures that uh, staff had noted with respect to the violation. And I can wrap up by basically summarizing. Uh, and we just put in a picture of the old AT&T store just so you can see what was there. But with respect to the request for the fine mitigation, um, Hill purchased the property with some complete and full intent to develop the site as approved by the village. They did spend substantial fees, services, and goods relying on the village council approval. Talked about the hearing on the August 9th where Hale was not present. Uh, we did move forward um, with the project. We had asked to be um, heard on a fine mitigation hearing earlier, and we were told we couldn't do that. We understood that. Um, we would like to have stopped the, the, the bleeding, if you will, the, the daily fines. Um, as I mentioned, part of the demolition plan, we had to disconnect the utility service so we couldn't maintain the landscaping. I did come in and meet with Mr. Hill, the building, and, uh, the building official, I believe in May of last year, and explained our unique situation to him and indicated that he was willing to stop the assessment of, of the fines accruing. So we have fulfilled our obligation to buy, develop, and construct a new tire uh, facility for discount tire and we're asking that uh, to the extent possible the uh, fines that have accrued be be waived okay what's the village's response um i just want to respond that over and over again i communicated with you in email that once the permit was issued um we would basically stay the fine 
Um, the permit was actually printed and issued on March 29th, 2018. Okay. Maybe you guys applied for it on the 1st. So by the time you had met with Mr. Hill to stop the bleeding, I had already noted it um, to stay the fine. So in fact, we actually, I calculated the date um, from that 20, that March 29th date, and it comes up to a $6,100 fine. So, um, and what actually brought me into the property is back in May, it wasn't being mowed. The grass was two and a half, three feet tall um, by the time I got it to hearing. And um, Hal's property, um, according to property appraisers, is where I mailed it. And it was Scottsdale Road in Chandler, Arizona. So I too don't know why they didn't have anybody show up. Well, I'm sure if we had been aware of it as their agent locally, we certainly would have been here and would have secured some type of process to, right. to cure. Well, and you know, I, I'm sure you remember Kevin had some, um, I guess it, the project had gone through council and there was supposed to be a couple changes done on the landscape plan and that submitted to Kevin for sign off. And that wasn't done either at the time that I cited it. So it wasn't in an approved project file. So I write everything when I go out to the property. So that's why it was written for dead, dying, repair, replace. And once I have an order on that, I can't just change it. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't as though they it was, it was malicious or intentional neglect. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they want to be a good corporate citizen. They want to be a, they're now a property owner in the village. Uh, this is a great location for them. We expect great success with the store. Um, we really couldn't maintain landscaping at a demolition or construction site. I understand there may be some overgrown grass, um, but. Uh, right, but what I'm trying to say is at the time it, it wasn't a construction site. You guys knew you were in the planning process, but nothing was in the approved files yet. It really had not been quite finalized. Um, so regardless, I mean, we're here now. I just wanted to clarify those points to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So what's the village's position with regards to the fine? The village would be willing to reduce the fine to a total of $1,622.15. Payable by, again, the 8-19-19 date. Could you repeat that just so I could make sure I get one six two two point one five? We're basically seventy five percent off. And what was the total fine? Because they're going to ask me. Thousand one hundred dollars. The total prior to your reduction. The total prior to reduction was six thousand one hundred. After right, she stopped because it. we stayed the fine. It would have been um, a lot from more. From three twenty nine eighteen, total compliance wasn't done until you got your landscape inspection, which was three nineteen nineteen. It would have been a fourteen thousand nine hundred and seventy five dollar fine. So, yeah, but we, as us. I had already stated to you in our email, and I mean, obviously, once that permit was issued, you know, we would stay a fine like that. File. And so, thank you for your help, you were, your cooperation. I want, just for the record, I want to state yeah. thank you for that. All right. So you guys run a very tight ship here, so it was. They, they do that. They do it that. All right. I will. Uh, I will reduce the fine to one thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars and fifteen cents, payable by eight nineteen. Payable by uh, August nineteenth. <coughs> we got a person thank over you. there that you thought was gone. She's back. She's right here. Thank you, sir. You'll thank you. Thank you. Now. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Back to uh, number 21. Yeah, page 9. Zero 09, or excuse me, case 19 129 Moorgate Circle, Rosia Del Pilar sends. Okay. You want to. You are, ma'am? Your name? Rosia signs. Okay. 19. This can't be that big. I know. I tender the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, letter requesting fine mitigation. Exhibit two, previous order assessing fine and affidavit of service. Exhibit three, affidavit of compliance. Exhibit four, verification of ownership. All right, so why should the fine be reduced, Ms. Sands? Well, actually, I was going to walk away <laughs> with all the amount of fines that I heard before, but um, it's my first time I've been the owner for 20 years, and this is the first time that I'm here. So that I, I missed, you know, I missed it and that's 
That's the only How thing that I How much is the fine? And what's the village's position? It exceeds your cost. Unfortunately, we're in one of those kind of situations where the village's costs typically exceed the fine amount, but we could reduce this to 561.13, payable by 81919. 561, eh, sounds too much. Um, $200 by 819. Okay? Tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All the power I have. Going back now to page one, fine assessment okay. hearings, case 19-0155, 2734, Misty Oak Circle, Margaret Flurry and Raymond J. Kelly. I'd like to enter into evidence the previous order, finding violation, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, permit information. All right, you have a signed green card, you have service. This has been out of compliance for 13 days, so we're asking for a fine of $325 and continuing. $325 plus continuing is granted. 19-0433-306 La Mancha Avenue, Progress Residential Borrower 5 LLC. So he's five, not one. I'd like to enter into evidence the previous order finding violation, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3 pictures. All right, so this is all out to Scottsdale, Arizona. What do we have? I'm just making 4090 Scottsdale, Arizona. Good, you have service. What this was out like? for 13 days at $50, so the fine would be 650 and continuing. 50 plus continuing is granted. 19 0464 117 Cortez Avenue, Progress Residential Borrower 5 LLC. I'd like to enter into evidence the previous order finding violation, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3 picture. Oh, this is number 5, so he wouldn't be here. Okay, you got service. Uh, and on this one, Special Magistrate Code Section 2657, which is the canopy without a permit is complied so the order will state that that continues to comply but because the other code sections remain out of compliance and have been for 13 days at $50 a day we'd ask for a fine of $650 and continuing granted 19-0465-133 Cortez Avenue Progress Residential Borrower 1 LLC like to enter into evidence the previous order finding violation exhibit 2 verification of ownership and exhibit 3 pictures Dang, I just thought it was the Dove Circle property. Okay, you have a signed green card, you have service. Again, out, Lovely stamping. out of compliance for 13 days at $50 a day, so a fine of 650 and continuing. Granted. 19-0488-277 Ponce de Leon Street, Progress Residential Borrower 5 LLC. You could have done a whole page on it. Like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, previous order finding violation, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3 pictures. All right, USPS delivered service is good. 650 plus continuing? No, this one was $25 day fine. Oh, so 325, 325 plus continuing is granted. 19-0527-10229 Okeechobee Boulevard, Cobblestone Village at Royal Palm Beach. I'd like to enter into evidence Exhibit 1, the previous order finding violation, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3. Um, Sign green card equals service. What do we have here? Pictures of people staying there okay what would you like this was out of compliance for four days we'd be asking for a fine of two hundred dollars and not continuing 200 no continuing is granted 19-0157-184 kingsway lawrence n and joanne m needle jr would like to enter the following into evidence exhibit one order finding violation affidavit of service exhibit two verification of ownership and exhibit three permit information all right affidavit of service is service so what would you like this has been out for 13 days so 325 dollar fine 325 plus continuing is granted thank you 19-0159-10289 carmen lane Thaylord, and vanessa marseille like to enter the following into evidence exhibit one order finding violation exhibit two verification of ownership exhibit three pictures sign green card is service 325 plus continuing yes sir granted 19-0174-10863 del Monte way arthur h jacobs we'd like to enter the following into evidence exhibit one order finding violation and affidavit of service mm -hmm. exhibit two verification of ownership exhibit three permit information permit dump from building i see all right you have service via posting again 13 days so 325 dollar fine and continuing 19-0183-10404 pippin lane helena y hepburn like to enter the following into evidence exhibit one order finding violation exhibit two verification of ownership exhibit three permanent information exhibit four affidavit of compliance finding effect is granted you have service oh, no this sign. actually oh, has a oh, fine this oh, was fine. out for four days so we'd be asking for a hundred dollar no continuing. continuing is granted 
19-0185-11949, Park Central, Erica Michelle and Anthony G. Sloan. I'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, permanent information. Sign green card. It looks like you went to lunch with the building department or something. <laughs> All right, how much is this one? 325 and continuing. Granted. Thank you. 19-0196-1280, Forest Way, Shana Thane. I'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Anyone affidavit of service. There? Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, permanent information. Does anyone live there? She's got like two cases now. Yeah, no. Okay, I'm just curious. Okay, uh, service via posting is good. 325 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. 19-0309-1328, Carousel Way, N.T. Louisant, and Florence Lucier. We'd like to enter the following end evidence. Exhibit 1, order finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, pictures. I just want to see a picture of the palm ponds. I mean, we got all the dirtiness of the sidewalks there, but... Yeah, and actually, that's code section 15-40, the palm trees yeah. hanging over the sidewalk. That, that was the one they fixed? So, ah, so I can't find it even. All right, so... The remaining 325 and continuing. So it's, okay, the 9-4 is the sidewalk? Which no, 1540. 15-40 is the sidewalk, and that's still bad? No. It's the palm trees, palm tree branches hanging over sidewalk. That's it's complied. complied, right, and the other things are still bad, is what I'm yes, saying. They're, yes, they're still in violation. And this is just uh, finding a fact on the palm trees or just nothing? The order will say they continue to comply with that finding section. Finding a fact on the tree, Thank you. palm trees. And, okay, granted. And then 325. 325 on continue. the arrest, granted. Thank you. Um, 19-0525-102, Morgate Circle, Raymond J. Wordsman. Code sections 1557 and 06-190A1, high grass and weeds, driveway and sidewalk are steam. I observed this violation on 4-11-19, sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 4-11-19, and have posted it to the property. I'd like to know the following document and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of repeat violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, previous order finding violation. Exhibit 3, verification ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. I'm so glad I got a riding lawnmower. What do you want on this one? Um, just for the record, we're now in the repeat violation hearing section of the agenda. So this has been out of compliance for 70 days at $50 a day. So we're asking for a fine of $3,500 and not continuing. Three five zero zero. I mean, I'm sorry, and continuing. And continuing. I'm good. I got to write that down because it looks weird. Okay. 3,500 continuing is granted. Thank you. 19-0706, 293 Sandpiper Avenue, Nelson and Anna Alvarez. Code sections 1557. It's also a repeat violation of high grass and weeds. I observed this violation on 42619. Sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 42619 and posted it to the property. I'd like to know the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of repeat violation, notice of hearing affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, previous order find in violation. Exhibit 3, verification ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. Exhibit 5, affidavit of compliance. All right, service via posting. Do you have a fine on this one? Yes, it was out of compliance for seven days at $50 a day, so 350 350 no continuing is granted. Thank you. 19-0707-246, Sandpaper Avenue, Audrey James. Code section 1557, high grass and weeds, also a repeat violation. I observed this violation on April 26th of 19, sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 426-19, posted it to the property as well. I'd like to know the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of repeat violation, notice of hearing. Affidavit of service, exhibit two, previous order finding violation, exhibit three, verification ownership, exhibit four, pictures. I like the way she uses a light to highlight the high weeds here. It's very cinematic. All right, you have service via posting 325 plus continuing? So this one was out for 55 oh. days at $50 a day, so $2,750 and continuing. 2750 continuing. Okay, granted. 19-0793-135 Finchport, Tyrone R. and Dorothy Copper. Repeat violation again, code section 15132. Basketball hoop is in the right of way. Observe this violation on 51919. Sent on notice of violation, notice of hearing on 51019. They signed for it on 51419. Like then the following documents and evidence. Exhibit one, notice of repeat violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification ownership, exhibit three. Two, order finding violation. Three is verification ownership exhibit four is pictures. All right, you have a signed green card. You have service. What would you like? Um, this one was out for 42 days at $50 a day, so a fine of $2,100 and continuing. 2100 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. I hope someone gets to the NBA. Cause... Huh? Yeah, there should be pictures, but it's stuck. What ifs? 
Keep moving. Um, violation hearing section now, 19-0383 is being pulled. Cool. Next page. 19-0604-2646, Windwood Way. Michael P. Woody check. Code section is 144A, disabled unregistered vehicle. I observed this violation on 422-19, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing, got the green card back signed. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. So I agree, card equal service. What would you like on these? Um, this is a finding of fact. Granted. 19-0639-2093, rest in circle, Bart Kaplan. Code section is 1557, high grass and weeds. I observed this violation on 42419, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and posted them on the property. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, and affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. This is a prize. They should win a prize for that. All right, so you have service via posting, and what would you like to do with these people? Yeah, it's on the TV screen. We're asking for a one-time abatement? Yeah, we're asking for compliance by 627 or a one-time abatement, which would include um, the $80 for the abatement 286, fee. The yeah, okay, 627 or abatement is granted with a total fee of $286. And if, yes, and if we could set it for the 710 fine assessment hearing if necessary. 710 is good, and how much are we? Okay, and 710 for the fine assessment. 627 or abate fine yes, assessment and Thank it's you. a 710 fine assessment yes sir granted next 19-0813-254 Ponce de Leon Street Progress Residential Borrower 1 LLC it's not Dove Circle but it's Residential 1 code sections are 2662F 94 1557 15132 and 6190A fence and disrepair making pool unsecured high grass and weeds dead palm fronds Drive and sidewalk stain. I observed this violation on 51519, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing, certified and got the green card back signed and posted it on the property. I'd like to enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, and affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. I was wondering what happened to Freo. They sold it all to progress. All right, you have a uh, affidavit of service, you can proceed. And for the record, uh, sections 1557 and 15132, which is the high grass and weeds and the dead palm fronds, are findings of fact. Okay. So you'll have a bifurcated order. The remaining code sections we'd be asking for compliance by 627 or the 710 fine hearing or up to $250 a day fine. All right, 627, 710, up to 250 yes, granted. Sir. Thank you. 19-0815-103, Barcelona Drive. Rup Kumar Ramakan and Neil Sommer. Code sections are 12.4C and 12.5. Garbage cans left curbside and not screened from view. I observed this violation on 5.15.19. Mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. All right, so you got them on 5.19. By 5.22, the trash cans are still out there? Yes. Lazy. All right, you have a signed green card. What would you like? Compliance by 627 or the 710 fine assessment hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 19-0851 is being pulled. 19-0366-796, Carissa Drive, Nuruddin Shake. Code sections 1557, 14, 2, and 124C, grass and weeds exceeds height the loud miscellaneous items, garbage can in public view. I observed this on 311-19. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 311-19 and were posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. All right, so you have service via posting. Is it a finding of fact? Yes, sir. Granted. Thank you. 19-0398-110 Brookwood Avenue, Angela and Terry Moore. Code section 144A, disabled vehicle. I observed this on 318-19. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 319-19 and were posted. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, exhibit three pictures. Dang it. An affidavit of uh, service. All right, you have an affidavit of service. There are three choices here, car, truck, or something else, and I was guessing car. I was wrong. All right, what would you like? Compliance by 8-1 or the 8-14 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. 8-1, 8-14, 25 granted. 
19-04848876 Croton Drive, high T and van three high Lee. 0619A16191 one one broken window. I observed this on 4519. The notice violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 4519 and were posted. We would like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, an affidavit of service, exhibit two, verification of ownership, exhibit three pictures, exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. We got them out of order, but it works. Um, Sorry. No problem. What is this, a finding of fact? Yes, Granted, sir. say finally. Thank you. Someone fixed a window, yay. 19-0541-826 Hibiscus Drive, TAH 2017, two borrower LLC. Code section 06190A1, the roof is in disrepair. I observed this on 41419. Um, the notice of violation, notice of hearing, we were sent out 41619 and we're signed for 42219. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. At least large corporations do sign their green cards. That's missing roofing shingles. What would you like? Finding a fact. Finding a fact is granted. 19-0542-799 Hibiscus Drive, Fernando Rodriguez. I was curious about this. Code guy. sections 9192, fence installed without a permit and wrong material used. Fence material was used. I observed this on 41419. The notice of violation and notice of hearing were mailed out 41619 and were signed for on 41819. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. Sign green card equals service. So I just gotta check this out. Okay. What kind of material is it? It just looks like well, it's metal something. Thing, yes. Kind of looks like the they, metal things they use instead of wood and for studs or something. Um, All right, what would you like? Finding a fact. Finding a fact. Um, only good. for the um, fence installed without a permit. The wrong material oh, is still the That's nine two. two. Yes. Okay. So nine two. Nine two. We'd be asking for compliance by eight one or the eight fourteen fine hearing or twenty five dollar a day fine. Eight one. And finding a fact on section nine one. All right, nine one is a finding of fact. Nine dash one. Okay. Granted. Next. Nineteen dash zero five seven nine one zero eight five Grand Duke Way, Max A Rodriguez. Code section fourteen two and twelve four C miscellaneous items, garbage can in public view. I observed this on four nineteen nineteen. The notice of violation and notice of hearing were mailed out on four nineteen nineteen and were signed for on four twenty two nineteen. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. All right, at least Max signs for his green cards. What would you like? Compliance by six twenty seven or the seven ten fine hearing or twenty five dollar day fine. Granted. Thank you. Nineteen dash zero five nine four is being pulled. Nineteen dash zero six two zero one five two zero running Oak Lane, Cheryl P. Isles. Code section 06190A1 and 5 sidewalk is stained. I observed this on 42219. The notice of violation and notice of hearing were mailed out 42319 and were signed for on 42519. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and exhibit 3 pictures. Sign green card equals service. Thank you. We'd be asking in this one for compliance by 81 or the 814 fine hearing or $25 day fine. 81814, 25 is granted. Thank you. Thank you. 19 630 834 Azalea Drive, Matthew J. Nelson, and Joshua Vargas. Code section 919294 124C and 142. The fence was installed without a permit and wrong material was used. Fence in disrepair, garbage can in public view, and miscellaneous items. I observed this on 42319. The notice of violation, notice of hearing were mailed out 42419, and we're signed for on 42619. We'd like to enter the following into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. What is this, sort of a white lattice? Yes. Okay, good. All right, sign green card equals service. Again, 81814. Yes, sir, $25. 25 day is fine. granted. Thank you. 19-0523-2602 West Lakeview Drive, RAR Properties, LLC. I have to get a truck this time. I'll be wrong again. You're wrong again. Post section 14 for disabled unregistered vehicle. I observed this violation on 41119. So now notice the violation, notice the hearing on 41119. And posted it to the property as well. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice the violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Finding a fact is granted. You have service via posting. Love the front end. Com 
Thank, Thank you. you. 19-0562-10605, Bobby Lane, Deborah P. Solanus, or Solanus. Code section was 2318B, parking on the front lawn. I observed this violation on 41519. Sent out notice of violation notice of hearing on 41719. They signed for it on 41919. Like to enter the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Those RAM people, says the Ford owner. All right, what would you like? Finding this is facts. a finding of fact, yes. granted. Thank you. 19 0564 Aquarius Lane, <coughs> Progress Residential Borrower 1 LLC. Code sections 15132, Swell and Yard have bare areas. I observe this violation on 41519. Send out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 41719. They signed for it on 42219. Like to know the following documents and evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. It's sad that I know that their P.O. box is 4090 tonight. This is like the fifth one I've looked at. Uh, sign green card equals service. What would you like? Compliance by 8 1 or the 814 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Yes, it's very sad. 19 0570 204 Sandpaper Avenue, Lauren Farina and Emilio R. Graveron. Code section 622-108.4 and 0690A3. Gutters without a permit, window replaced without a permit, and driveways weather and faded. I observe this violation on 41819. Send out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 41819. They signed for it on 42219, but it was not dated. I received it on 422. Um, I'd like to enter following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, AS400 permanent information. Okay, you have a signed green card. It looks like it should be a confidential record case, but I don't make those things up. Uh, this one, code section 622-108.4, which is the gutters without a permit and the windows without a permit, is a finding of fact. All right, so they permitted it. And section 16, excuse me, 06190A3 is, we'd be asking for compliance by 8-1 or the 14 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 19-0631-1606 Lakeview Drive, Hashim and Pamela T. Mehmed. Code section 14-4, disabled unregistered vehicle. I observe this violation on 423-19. Sign out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 423-19. I posted it to the property. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Do you think that's why it's backed in? Yeah, service via posting. What would Com you like? Compliance by the 8-1 or the 8-14 fine here. Granted. Or the $25 day fine. Thank you. 19-0744-121-J Court, Amy E. Grushin and Jean Price Estate. Code section 14-4, disabled unregistered vehicle. I observe this violation on 5-2-19. Sign out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 5-2-19 and posted it to the property. Also spoke to the homeowner. Um, I'd like to enter the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. I thought I was right, but I don't know if a minivan's a truck. <clears throat> All right, so what would you like, 8 one 8 14 25 No, finding a fact. Finding a fact, fact is granted. Thank you. 19-0870-102-00, Fox Trail South, SS Development, LLC. Ba -ba -ba. Code section 622-108.4, electrical work done without a valid permit. This violation was written and seen on 5-28-2019. It was mailed certified mail on the same day and signed for on 5-30-2019. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. And Exhibit 3, pictures. Aren't you just dying to know what they're plugging in? You have a... <coughs> Sign green card, you have service. We'd you could die. It could. I talked <laughs> about exploding I tanks earlier. It's all fun. What did you like here? Compliance by 630 or the 710 fine hearing or an up to $250 a day fine. Granted. Moving now to page 10, health safety one-time abatement hearings. Case 19-0845-143 Granada Street. Progress residential borrower 5 LLC. Do you have to call this one? The wisdom. Words of wisdom, just go buy it. There's no. That was fine mitigation. They didn't show up. They didn't show right. up. Okay, well, yeah, we don't pull them. We just don't. We just don't do anything. We just let them go. Okay, no show. 
and S. Code section is 1557. This is a health and safety for high grass and weeds. I observed this violation on 521.19, mailed a notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, got the green card back, and also posted on the property. Mark down into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing and affidavit of service, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three, picture. Wasn't there a dude here with a progress shirt on? You have service via posting, what would you like? Or, or the uh, abatement order will be granted. You have it before you, it's a one-time abatement. And Got it, it. $286, what's today's date? 19? 18, 18, 19. 19. An appearance at the 710 fine hearing. Granted, signed. Thank you. 19-0850, okay. 330 La Mancha Avenue, Rosemary Allen. Code section is 1557, this is health and safety for high grass and weeds. I observed this violation on 522.19. Now the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, got the green card back and also posted it on the property. I like to enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing and affidavit of service, exhibit two, verification of ownership and exhibit three pictures. Why is the backyard always so much worse than the front yard? It's like the neighbors go over there and cut the front or something. Yes, that's exactly what happens. I know, I have a riding lawnmower. I probably do that now. The order before you is uh, an order uh, permitting continuing abatement which has been reviewed and signed next 18-0899-1280 Shana chorus way Shana Thane this is health and safety uh, code section 1557 grass and weeds exceeds height allowed I observed this on 6319 the notice of hearing and notice of excuse me the notice of violation notice of hearing were mailed out 6319 and were posted like to enter the following into evidence exhibit one notice of violation notice of hearing and affidavit of service exhibit two verification of ownership and exhibit three pictures all right you have a service via posting i'll be very happy to sign it it looks like it's well over a foot it's again an order uh, granting continuing abatement signed thank you 19-0907 is being pulled and i'm sorry i was incorrect uh, going back up to find mitigations 19-254 we are hearing that 11440 okeechobee boulevard number 210 399 palmetto uh -huh. llc words of wisdom counseling llc i'd like to enter the following documents into evidence exhibit order finding delinquency and assessing fine exhibit two verification of ownership and exhibit three the uh, letter from the property owner stating that the tenant was not there and they had a new lease now. Okay, so what do you want? We're going to reduce this to zero. Reduce to zero is granted. It's better than NS. Thank you. Which Moving now good. to other business, case 17-1162-11476, Okeechobee Boulevard, Mohammed T. Javed, Javed MDPA, and Shahid Chaudhry. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, the order assessing fine. Exhibit two, the verification of ownership. And exhibit three, do I need the? No. No. Exhibit, exhibit two. two. That's it. All right, so we have exhibit one and two. What would you like? It, what you um, will get is an amended order. There was an error in the legal description and the PCN number on your previous order. So we want the fine and everything to stay the same. Amended order granted to replace or to fix legal it's way off so there and it almost was again <laughs> all right 810 anything further no sir 810 is done done done